Chairman, excuse me, uh, I'm going to have to rec uh, uh, recuse myself for this uh, application. Okay. Uh, uh, Ken Nelson did arrive. Right. She usually does. Uh, yes, for this you do. Uh, please take the roll call. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Um, and the legal ad, too. Rick. Okay. Ken Nelson? Here. Linda DeGray? Here. John Petronella excused himself. Guillermo Salazar is not here. Richard Suzak is here. Okay, you forgot uh, me. You forgot oh, oh Scott Mary Scott. Scott. Here. <laughs> Alden at DeGray will be sitting in for the ethic commissioner. And Scott. Okay. Uh, Gentlemen, yeah, there was a legal notice. Hold on, we've got to find Uh, not for aquifer. No. There's just the nope, just the agenda and the application materials okay. and the minutes. I thought I'd seen one. I'm sorry. Okay, gentlemen, if it's, you would uh, introduce yourself, please, okay. name and address. I'm Larry Webster from Alfred Benish and Company, uh, representing GPM Investments, the per people who are running these gas stations slash store at 56 Enfield Street. Ed Garambone, project manager with GPM Investments. Okay. So this is really just a registration. Um, you received the application materials in your packets. They included um, a, an emergency response operator training program along with their um, uh, materials management plan. Um, as you know, you previously approved uh, the tank replacement at a, a prior meeting under planning and zoning. Um, uh, we submitted to you also a staff report with a draft resolution, um, basically showing that they met the requirements for uh, like they, they pretty much checked all the boxes as required for aquifer for registration. Um, and there are uh, standard conditions of approval, which we also, also included. Um, and we also did a site inspection in, and included um, our inspection report with pictures. And we included an extra condition of approval number six. Um, we found a drum containing the cooking oil um, in the back of the building with outdoor storage, which uh, was not approved, and the cooking oil would need to be removed or put on uh, in a different container, something that's more protected than where it's located right now. Other than that, um, those are the only things that we found at the site. So if you have any. To address the one thing that you found subsequent to the report, I'm sorry, yes. Is it on? If the, red if the light button, is red. Yes. Uh, to address that one concern that you had, we discovered in talking to the donut shop operator, who's a uh, um, separate business, uh, that he is required by the health department to have that drum there for his waste oil, that he's required to store it outside of the building. Uh, so at this point, our uh, plan is to uh, require him to get, it's his responsibility, so we're going to require him to get an exterior container for the drum that would provide containment in the event that something happened. Uh, there are plenty of products available. Uh, Benish will make three or four options available to the uh, to the tenant, and he will be responsible to inside to make that happen. It's not a separate building, so a sublease. The the commission would have to amend that um, uh, that condition of approval number six if okay. you wanted to. I, I, yes, we will do that when we discuss it. Is that clear to the, the commission what we intend to do? Yeah. That, yeah, that, uh, should that be in the conditions, I guess? Yes. Uh, I want to compliment the staff, really, because this, I think, really shows the type of work that you have to do over and above, really, even the plan. Well, it's under the planning and zoning. Huh? But you've got a lot of outside inspections and a lot of really other things, I don't know if everybody really realizes what you are they're doing and, and the material that you have to put out out there. Uh, yep. 
Yeah, I want to thank you for, for, for doing it because it's really <laughs> one of the most thorough uh, readings that I've had on a project that we've had, too, because before it was almost okay. You've gone out and said it's okay, but not, not all this paperwork and filling out forms and all the rest yeah. inspection reports yeah. those yeah. inspection reports are the forms that were um, provided to us by the uh, Department of en uh, Energy and Environmental Protection so we're just using what they gave to well, us really um, and including over the pictures years, and I compliment you on really doing a thorough job on, on this well Jen and Raquel have both stepped up you know, they're, they're fabulous at this so yeah, they are. I, I only have one more comment is is that when it, it when I read your, you know, regulated activities in aquifer protection form APA two, it took me three pages to figure out where where I was going in terms of, you know, there there isn't sort of a name right on the first page, yeah. and and then all the, the the line weights of all the type is the same, so you can't tell the difference between a question that's being asked and an answer that's being given. So, you know, if there was some differentiation between all of that and somehow get the name on the first page, yeah. it would save a lot of, you know, and, and again, I, I finally found it, but I had to like start underlining things to try to figure out where I was going. Yeah, as part of this process, we'll probably update that. <laughs> My note says, where is name and address on the front page? Right, so, and, yeah, in terms of if you, if you can do that, I think that the form would be a lot easier to, to a a maintain and, and actually a a access. That, that, and the cooking oil is one thing I had down. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. You got the explanation. Now you got the explanation. Mm -hmm. So I have no questions. Anyone else with questions? Yes, Ken. Um, uh, this is one of those issues where I sense the frustration. I mean, they got a business owner in their building. The business owner is doing what he's told by the health district. And our rule and their rule don't jive together. So I think we should have a meeting with the health district. Maybe Linda, when she, because she's on their board, she can bring so it up. Too. <laughs> but the two of us got to get together because any restaurant over an aquifer is going to have the same issues. Oh, yeah. So when they do their inspections, they need to make sure that that waste oil is in a suitable storage course, container yeah. so it doesn't fall on the property owner because I know they don't want the oil all over the ground either. I mean, it is only cooking oil, but still... You know, one inspection by the health district, if they knew, it, it would resolve oh, this yeah. issue. Yeah. You know? But I think the health department does know it's on an aquifer because um, my corona has been on working for the district for 35 years. So I think yeah, but they, we uh, need to probably bring it back to his attention. So you know, require a certain. Type right. of container or containment system for it. So, well, unless if it's over an aquifer, our department also can send a note over. Right. Right, but how would we know it? The health district goes out and does an inspection oh, every year time, on these yeah. restaurants. So even if they have it today, yeah. you know, six months from now they move it or somebody takes it, and right. you know the owner of the property is left holding the bag again. So. And this would only be inspected once a year. Yeah. This facility by the health department. So. Right, but we would never inspect it. No. Once it passes, right. we're, no, we're out. Right, right, yeah. Oh, oh okay. Any uh, just, questions from the Just one staff? comment. Oh, yes. As I read your emergency um, oh, that was a good um, operation training program, and I was glad to see that <laughs> yeah. because Many, many, many years ago at that gas station, my car caught on fire because of my stupidness. I'm not going to tell you what I did, but it caught on fire. <laughs> it was Maybe stupid. It and um, I ran in because there was no fire extinguisher outside, and the fire extinguisher was buried in the back room. And then I read this, and I'm like, wow, this is really good. They've put these great things in so, so thank next you time you do that no i'm never going to do that again never, <laughs> never. <laughs> no, but it's it good to stupid. know it's there if you need it yeah. yes but it was stupid <laughs> okay 
If you're ready, someone make a motion. M Mr. Chair, I'll move to approve the draft re resolution for the Aquifer Protection Agency ARA number 656 Enfield Street in accordance with the um, draft re resolution dated April 25th, 2019, as prepared by the Planning Department with the conditions indicated with the modificate modification of condition number six so, so that the, the drum containing the cooking oil and outdoor storage of items located in the rear of the building must be placed in a suitable self-contained storage container. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor? I, I wouldn't say so, no. Uh, in fact, I don't think they're even listed as being here yet. Uh, I'm sorry. Six in favor. Six in favor. Well, that's unanimous. Yep. Six zero zero. Six zero zero. Okay. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. And thank you. Correspondence is uh, on XAPA 40 Moody Road. Uh, so that was really just um, kind of a housekeeping thing we wanted to put on the record um, in case anyone was trying to find the approvals for 40 Moody Road going forward. We were using a one numbering system when we approved or when you approved 40 Moody Road um, to be registered and uh, we weren't numbering them the way they should have been numbered, I guess. So now as we're revamping the program and doing it the right way with uh, DEEP, they, t they prescribed a numbering system to us. Um, so we just wanted to really get it out on the record that um, XAPA uh, registration 17-22 for 40 Moody Road will be uh, numbered appropriately at ARA number 008 with permit number AR number 2017-10-19. It's really just to get it on the record um, and so that you guys know that that application number that you did approve prior is now being re numbered differently. Okay, that's a uh, town car wash. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, any questions for any commissioner's correspondence? Chair Lindane, the motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. And all in favor? We are adjourned. Okay, Now you gotta wait 10 minutes. You got 10 minutes. They're all squishy. Really? Yeah. I'm nervous for a second. <laughs> kind of squishy. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll eat it. Nothing wrong with it.
planning and zoning uh, commission to order for April 25th, uh, 2019. And uh, we've had the salute to the flag, so we'll move right on into the roll call, please. Charles Dern. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Um, Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. John Petronella. Here. Guillermo Salazar. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Call you this time. Again, uh, Mr. Chairman. Who, who on, on the addition? Okay, yes, go ahead. Uh, make a motion that we go into executive session for some legal discussion. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Uh, Laurie, who, who from staff is going to attend? All of, all of you? Uh, well, we're well, yeah, the town attorneys. And is the secretary coming? Oh. No, 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 no there'll be no notes. Okay. <laughs> with, with the... Uh, uh, Can't do that. <laughs> with two staff members to, to attend. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Commissioner that Salazar, I didn't on. see your hand. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Right. Uh, well, it's for staff. Okay. All right. That's uh, the unanimous 10, I believe. Okay. We're going upstairs. So we're going up.
Executive session. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. Uh, the, the discussion was held. There was no, no votes taken and no decisions made. Thank you. Did you, uh, Secretary Wells? The motion was made to come out of the executive session. It was unanimous. There were no votes taken and no decisions made. <clears throat> okay, continuing on. Old business. Site plan review, SPR 1774. No, no. I'm sorry. Minutes. Oh, Approval yeah. of the minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm jump, tried to <laughs> go too fast. <laughs> Approval of minutes of April 11th is a regular meeting. So moved. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Are there any additions, errors, or omissions? Again, Commissioner <coughs> Annette Salazar will be in for the uh, absent commissioner. I do have I, one. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Liz. Um, page two, second paragraph. Second sentence from the um, bottom of the paragraph. Um, it says, uh, where's, where's the beginning? Commissioner Nelson pointed out EMS and the fire department are also 24 uh, 7 operations, to which Mr. Nelson replied that EMS and fire department are restricted to fueling between 2 30 p.m. How can Mr. Mr. Nelson answer Mr. Nelson? It was uh, Mr. Nunes. Scott, okay, but I'm just saying it, Scott, it, it right. It's got Mr. Nelson's twice. <laughs> Anyone else? Mm -hmm. All in favor as amended? Unanimous. Oh no, Mary's gone. I wish people would let me know. <laughs> Maybe uh, she didn't have time. I, I saw her. <laughs> we, we need to know who's seated and who isn't at this point. I'm sorry? We, we need to know who is seated yeah, and who sorry. is not <laughs> at this point. Yeah, that was for this. Okay. Well, I did say <coughs> that Commissioner Salazar was seated, yes. But I didn't know Mary was gone. Uh, all right. Okay, Miss uh, Commissioner DeGray um, seconded the motion. So were you, were she seated or while Mary was out or? Okay. She's obviously not voting, so. Yeah, she, she made the motion, so Mary she's got to <laughs> Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. At this point in the, in the meeting, I welcome comments, concerns, and opinions from residents uh, concerning uh, planning and zoning in the town of Enfield. Uh, you may <coughs> discuss anything that's, uh, as long as it's not, not on the agenda, or any matter that's part of an open public hearing of the commission or a matter where the decision of the commission may be pending. Anyone would like to address the commission under those conditions? Anyone would like to address the commission under those conditions? Last call. Hearing none now, I guess we'll get back. I'll get myself back in order here. Uh, site plan. No bond releases, no old, the old business site plan review, SPR 1774, 25 Hazard Avenue. This is uh, AAA. Is. Uh, yes, please take the roll. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. John Petronella. Here. Guillermo Salazar. And Richard Suzak is here. Although that Salazar will be sitting in for the absent commissioner. Uh, are the, the applicants are not here. Okay. Uh, nope. They still have to work out some kinks with the engineering department, um, and we'll get you all the information uh, when they're ready to go forward. But they requested that they be uh, tabled until the next. We have meeting. a letter to that effect. 
they didn't put it in writing. They just requested it through um, over the phone to planning staff that they be continued. Mm -hmm. So it, oh, it would boy. be up to What are the kinks they have to work out? Um, there was some confusion over the compensatory storage and how their calculations were made. So um, engineer, our engineering department and their engineers have to so figure it's it out. Fortunate that we Absolutely. Yep. We're trying to get that force down our throats last meeting, and we stood our ground, and it's a good thing we did. May I ask uh, another question uh, uh, there, and uh, Linda and I are discussing it early. This uh, health department notice that uh, came in in there, uh, what can we do about that, or, or is there any reaction from uh, the, the water pollution control? Uh, there was no reaction from water pollution control on that. Um, I did give you the uh, staff comments from the first time around under the public hearing where water pollution control didn't have any concern with that. We can certainly reach out to them get them again. We did redistribute the application materials can to we water pollution this, control. Can we do it at this date? I mean, can we add that to, to uh, this hearing? Well, we we don't have the authority to make them fix anything. The WPC, if they feel it's warranted, has the right. So but that would be outside of our meeting then. Well, but I mean, we could still get their comments, but it's up to the WPC to determine whether or not the sewer needs modifications or fixing or extensions or not. That's their purview. Okay, I have a question. Is um, in their first application, health department had no comment. Uh, my question, when I read this, and I didn't get a chance to call my Corona. What what made this big change? I mean, he's saying it should all be upgraded this sewer. Of I, I mean, he's suggesting oh, right, that but I'm just saying is he went from no comment to sewers. Did he say anything? I mean, was he at the first ART? He doesn't. Does he? Go? Was the health department at the first ART? I don't remember. I don't have the. So this would have started before the first PH file. I um, I can run up to the the office to check, but. Well, could you let us know? Or let you know uh, in the next packet. Going forward, yep. because since these aren't people aren't here, mm -hmm. but um, just to find out what that change was, yep. because it, I know when the sewer went in it was never mind when it was <laughs> in my life, but <laughs> I am on a roll today with really bad stuff. <laughs> but. Um, None of that stuff. None of those buildings were there, and so I have some other concerns. So, that's all. Thank you. Charlie, Charlie yeah. was Charlie was. Oh, next. Charlie. So should we make a motion to table it for two weeks or four weeks? Well, I want to know what the commission wants to do. If we don't have a letter, and table it. Well, well, you can. I, I have a problem along with what Commissioner DeGray is saying. We approve this. The original approval. With nothing from the health district now they give us a grocery list well that's yeah. I, I mean so what kind of feedback are we getting you know engineering passed the first time no problem i hate to they're saying it it's the same it. thing they're just downsizing it now our engineering has a problem with it I tried no, to but you got to remember that the engineering it's has a, has an issue with the calculations of the compensatory storage area the way they are proposing it today remember that's but what this application right, is for, for that okay modification originally. Correct. Okay. Well, my other question for you is, is water pollution control answering any questions? They don't have a director right now, so who's answering their... Right, and, and we, we're um, a little short-staffed ourselves, so, I mean, there's well, been I mean, a little disconnect, a so we're trying <laughs> to get... Got people doing before whatever. Before the next meeting, we will try to have answers from all it's, of it's, the... It's tough to mentioned. spring on the last... Uh, yeah. You know, the last we agree. second. And, and the applicant wasn't all that happy about it either, so... I, I imagine, right. So, I mean, we're going to try to fix this process, but um, for if the time being... If they're not ready gonna... for the next meeting, they should give us yes, a, a letter saying right. that. But, but along in Lori's defense and the department's defense, if she's not getting the information back from other departments, it ties her hands. No, it I does. know the council's pushing for speedy streamline to get things approved. Her hands are tied. 
Well, I've again, been dealing with this for. Yeah. The problem is Speedy doesn't necessarily. I understand, yes, Charlie, yeah. but if she got, if she, no. I mean, the health district's a perfect example. They just sign off on the first one. Now that somebody actually sat down and looked at it, there's a problem. Yeah. That's why well, back with the preview or manager quite a while back, they set up the ARTs to yeah, try and, to solve this. And we used to get, you used to get copies of it. And uh, we used to get copies of the ART, which we don't anymore, but which was helpful. You could tell who was there and who wasn't. And a couple of times I, I went to the manager and said, so-and-so isn't responding, and he got on the case. But I don't know who's there and who's not there anymore. So, so why did we stop getting uh, the ART? But that's what we're sitting here right now. We want copies of the ARTs for all these meetings that happen because, because that'll they, help us understand. Because they didn't have staff to go down and, and take minutes is one thing. I know, but they weren't long. Right. I, Barbara used to go down and take the. Jose used to do them. Well, yeah, but that's but again, that's a different than uh, the, the secretary do it. They don't have any, you know, anybody to write them up anyway. So, yeah. well, so, so in, in, in the interest of moving on with the agenda, we will do our best to answer these questions for okay. you for the next meeting well, we and, and try so to I, I get to things Jen, a little bit more me? streamlined because I'm not sure whether the health department's even attending the ARTs or not. And I, I know that they are understaffed and overworked as well, but they're a regional agency and... It's it's difficult to get them to comment sometimes. So we'll, well, we'll I'll, I'll reach out to them and see what's happening. Town council realizes what you people do up there. Okay. Uh, well, you don't have. Uh, do you have an email or some kind of record that they requested this, or just voice to voice? Yeah. Well, we we can get it in writing, but they it was over the phone at like five o'clock exactly when all of this sort of came about yeah, so well it's up yeah, yeah just do table. Yeah, just table, table is it. better not you're not yep. extending we're no, not doing we aren't ta we aren't doing the extension no. then we'll just have to table it yeah it's our number this is it. yes okay. exactly you, you've got I'd like they've got time mr chair i'd like to make a motion that we table sbr 1774 second to, uh, do you to give the next time no to the next meeting Okay. Well, of course. Mm -hmm. Next meeting, if we get a letter, okay. we can Any discussion? Do it longer. <laughs> uh, no, okay. Then all in favor? Okay, then we tabled. <coughs> okay. Now, no business. Glad that we got that over with. <laughs> uh, public hearing uh, to Winfield Street. Uh, the applicant here. And please, when you come forward, is identify yourselves and uh, with name and address. And the secretary, please take the legal ad and uh, okay. take the roll. Okay. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold public hearing on Thursday, April 25th, 2019, at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application Public Hearing 2939. To Enfield Street, special use permit application for a 1,900 square foot new restaurant bakery with a drive through outdoor dining patio, and internally let freestanding sign located within the King Street Enfield Street Design District, Pride Limited Partnership Owner Applicant, Map 35, Lot 107, BL Zone, dated this 13th day of April 2019. Um, Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. John Petronella. Here. Guillermo Salazar. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. I just want to state for the record that I used to own this particular property, several of these properties, that Pride Limited par Partnership bought off of me, um, I'm going to say five or six years ago. There is no conflict on my side as far as I see it. There's no monetary gain. I have nothing to do with this property anymore. But I want to put it out to the applicant. If they see any such issues with it, I will happily step aside and recuse myself from the whole hearing. It's entirely up to them. No, there's no issue. I think it would be beneficial to have someone that's familiar with the property, as I'm sure the most of you are in the same aspects. 
I appreciate okay. the disclosure, but again, we're willing to go forward uh, with Commissioner Nelson being part of the commission. Okay, thank you. Okay, Commissioner Salazar will be seated for the absent commissioner. Uh, if you will, please identify yourselves. Good evening again. My name is uh, James Channing, uh, Corporate Counsel for Pride Limited Partnership. I'm an attorney in uh, Massachusetts, so I'm here just as in an agent capacity uh, in Connecticut. My bar is pending actually in Connecticut, but just for full disclosure. <laughs> that being said, uh, with me is Scott Hesketh, our traffic engineer from Hesketh Associates in East Granby. Uh, not present today is Dana Steele, who did the drainage uh, from Russo Associates uh, down in East Windsor. Um, he did, uh, I'll get into the traffic of the drainage in a second, but I can tell you that he did submit the drainage report. Uh, my understanding, he's had communications with uh, the town engineer, and I believe they've worked out, and there's no uh, pending issues or concerns, as far as I know, in that aspect. But again, I defer to. I just have a, one thing before you start the drainage report. Uh, they're apparently doing something with drainage on Enfield Street. So I think that's what it is by the looks of the pipe and whatever else they're doing. Is that going to have any effect on what you have? Is the only thing I, I have in my, the question. I don't know. And maybe that's something for for your, uh, who, who was it? You said Dana Steele. Mr. Steele, I can tell you Engineer Steele did, did look at all the capacity. And because it is the overflow ties into Enfield Street in terms of uh, the DOT, DOT will be re reviewing it as well as any pending or potential applications or work that they have done going on there because Enfield Street is a public way, Route 5. Right. The state has jurisdiction over ultimate say over, and so we would need their approval in addition to the commission's approval. Uh, and they'll review that to make sure that there's but no conflict. I don't know if they're conflict. increasing capacity, which would increase the capacity for your runoff. I don't, I don't know. that he'd have to, he'd have to uh, just address that later or at some time because I, I don't know what they're doing out there. I'll verify that there's no detrimental impact as to any potential work in uh, Route 5 as it is to his calculations. I noticed the pipes are all on your property, too. <laughs> okay. If you would, then. Again, in a matter of background, we're talking about uh, two, what's known as two Enfield Street or two Connecticut Avenue. It's actually uh, the corner of Enfield Street and Connecticut Avenue. It's now a one lot. It previously was four lots. Again, uh, to Enfield Street being the former uh, bicycle so shop and commercial realty business uh, on the corners of Vacant Lot, which is a parking lot. And then on Connecticut Avenue, two Connecticut Avenue and zero Connecticut Avenue, one's the yellow duplex, a vacant duplex, as well as next to it is a vacant uh, single residence. All those were acquired. The lots were merged. Uh, still, even though they were merged, it comes to just less than 24,000 square feet. And so it was required to get a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals because it is a non-conforming lot. It's less than the mandatory 30,000 square feet in a BL district. That was approved, I believe, in December 2017, but it was approved. There's no uh, pending appeal. It's lapsed. It was recorded. Uh, the GIS and the assessors in the town, it's now considered one lot. In terms of the location, again, it is the BL district as well as the Enfield Street, uh, King Street overlay district uh, from a design standpoint. Uh, what we are proposing is a 1,900 square foot restaurant slash drive through. Uh, again, I defer first to the uh, rendering that was provided, uh, and I'll approach the day in a second to discuss a little further. Uh, but in terms of uh, frontage, it does comply with everything else but the lot size, in which, again, the variance was approved. And looking and evaluating at the, the situation. I may you, suggest if you just face it towards the, the camera so that the people and the, the uh, town can see it. Certainly. You're, you're, oh, they can see it. I think it's, it's, it's clear. 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 That's up. better. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> and, and, it would be on there if that was down, but we got a screen here, too. Yeah, I guess so. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Again, we do have, it would be a standard white colonial clapboard with uh, some brick facade. Uh, the patio is proposed to be in the, in the front entrance. Again, with all well, the vegetation that I'll get into in a second. But as far as the King Street Overlay District, it's my understanding that the design does comply, at least from the planning department standpoint and interpretation, it complies with all those requirements. Uh, we do believe that it would be a very inviting proposal. Again, it would be the first uh, building you see coming 
uh, southbound coming in from Massachusetts on the right hand side this would be the first and replacing those three I don't want to say dilapidated but certainly the three of uh, now vacant buildings one of the buildings in fact uh, the first building is actually crossing the borders the garage itself is in Massachusetts and the building itself is in Connecticut so uh, if this were to be approved and the demolition goes forward again we would be eliminating some uh, non-conforming buildings which obviously is something I think is uh, encouraging uh, from multiple standpoints. Again, in terms of just uh, the specifics of it, again, the clapboard all around uh, the drive through building would be on the south elevation, uh, about a third, a third of the way down uh, along Connecticut Avenue, and then come down and around. Uh, all the mechanical, roof mechanicals are to be enclosed as required. Again, with the clapboarding, um, in terms of signage on the building, there's one proposed building sign to be on the east elevation or the, the elevation that does face uh, Route 5. What we propose in terms of parking would be all, there's actually 13 proposed spots. Um, we did it just to err on the side of caution, not knowing how the commission may interpret whether or not employee spots are still required. I know under the old uh, regulations, it was re requested that you have employee spots. I think when the re uh, revamp came up of the regulations, it may be a matter of interpretations. But if, in fact, those two uh, spots were no longer required, I think it may make sense to eliminate the two spots here along uh, Route 5, one being a compact spot and one being just another spot. Again, these were added uh, just to add until include the total of 13 spots. If we were to remove those, we'd propose having all 11 spots, including two compact spots here on the northerly side of the building. Uh, I'll defer to Scott Hesketh to get more into traffic and circulation and requirements, but the proposal would be a, a counterclockwise of movement with a drive-through. The drive-through order board would be back here, enclosed trash here, and then the, again, just for reference, the drive-through window would be there as well. Again, the curb cut, we would, again, pinned. We do have a pending application before the Department of Transportation. Uh, to slightly move, actually, uh, the egress, access egress, there's two currently, one along the state line and one a little closer to Connecticut Ave. The proposal would be to move it a little uh, north mound, have both a right and left turn ability to exit the site, as well as one entrance, a 36-foot wide uh, curb cut. In terms of seating calculation, again, a seating area would be here, as well as an access to the patio or the front seasonal outdoor dining, which again is something that's subject to the commission approval. Uh, the back area, the accessible restroom, all state of the art. And again, the drive through window, just for edification purposes, would be here. Queuing, I know the commission has a requirement, I believe, of at least 10 cars being able to queue that. I can tell you, again, this is a, a proposal, Pride Cafe Deli R. Our numbers are a scintilla of what Dunkin' Donuts or any major fast food chain, again, I'll defer to Scott Hesketh, but a Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts. In fact, I believe the Dunkin' Donuts application is pending that just down the roads to remove, be moved from the gas station down to 90 Enfield Street. So Dunkin' Donuts is there. This isn't going to be a Dunkin' Donuts. This is a pride, a proposed pride. Uh, again, there are the 10 stacking cars. Three would be here, or four, excuse me, would be south of the building. Three up along the west end of the building, and then the additional queuing here that could go all the way back along the state border. But we do have at least the three cars, the total of 10 cars, three cars here. The outdoor seating would be all just standardized iron chairs, iron table to be in the front, two tables with four chairs each. Uh, seasonal dining would be removed in the off season, as well as an automatic close uh, trash receptacle here. The signage plan, we are asking for an internally illuminated sign because it is in the Enfield Street, uh, King Street Overlay District. Uh, it is subject to special permit approval by the commission, but we would ask based on the design. And I think the, really what I, I defer to as a, a really a colonial, as colonial as a sign can get in terms of the black bottom, the, the facade, the cap on it, and the pride lettering, uh, internally illuminated. We're only asking that it be 10 feet tall, although by right I believe we have 20 feet tall it could be. Uh, so it is, we're cutting the, the size, the potential height in half, and we would just ask that, you know, a non-obtrusive, uh, offensive, just internally lit sign be allowed. With a question, you just mentioned the sign. I noticed on the drawings, 
that you have two spaces. You got the pride, but then you have a blank space under it. Are you intending to to add something there? It depends on, on whether or not there'd be a, a, a tenant allowed, but I think in addition, whether or not there'd be the ability to have, I believe it's was it a special permit B, which whether or not the interpretation is a textile or lettering signs as to whether or not that would be uh, subject to a matter of approval. Again, it, it's, if you're going to have a tenant, where would you? Uh, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be a, a tenant as, as say to maybe a brand where say you know cafe. What we have known as the Pride Cafe or the Pride Kitchen drive-through. Not a tenant in terms of a third-party tenant, but just another offering. Whether it be you know the, the Pride, or what's marketed now as a Pride Kitchen. But so it wouldn't. All I'm be. trying to say, if you if you have a sign, we're not just approving the sign with Pride, but the possibility of another addition to to it on on that blank. Right, he's saying remove the bottom panel, and if you wanted to change it, you have to come back to right. add to it. Right, yeah, well, because let's... Right now, it's blank. We're not going to approve something that, you know, a week from now, it could have vulgarity on it or something. <laughs> right, so... There's a, the a blank the panel. You got freestanding price, Correct. Great, but that bottom square, you know, just leave it off the sign until you come up with something or come up with something, come back when you're building the building, and have us approve what you're going to put on the lower side of it. Yeah, I, I can be more specific on it. My understanding that the, the signage approval, aside from the internally illuminated, was subject to the, obviously the building permit process by right and or if it's a level C by special permit. But if you want specifics now to commit as to what we propose, I'll be more than happy to. Well, yeah, so that's to what we're that approving the sign. And we, aren't, we don't buy or try not to take something we don't know. We don't know what could be on there. I can I, absolutely. I'll, I'll firm up exactly what we propose to have there uh, for your edification. Or just leave the bottom square off. Yeah, well, we can yeah, remove it or in the alternative. I'll yeah. certainly evaluate as to what uh, would, be would be most be appropriate. So you, just but we're not trying to. Something later, and you want the panel on, is just call Lori or the the office, and I, I don't think it would be a matter of just approval. Staff approval, probably. Yeah. Um, well, like the main reason that the sign was put in part of this um, application was because um, it's internally lit, and that is what needs to be approved by you guys in a design district. Well, what's being Other lit? than is that, that, it that would. lower panel going to be lit? Yes. Uh, well, so. Stationary? Uh, why can't we know what's in it? That's all I'm saying. It, 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 well, you, it's not going to move the sign, anything. not the content. Right. Yes. right. It's not going to move, is it? No, it's not allowed to be mm. moved. No. Okay, yeah. just checking. Other than uh, that, it would be handled administratively per your regulations for freestanding signs. Right. If it were multi-tenant and they were, um, they had multiple um, identifications on that, that then that would be the special permit that you're approving for the pylon identification sign. So. Well, I know we don't approve for the the, the content, but. <laughs> the sign. Oh, no, right. okay. I had my internally lit signs, the freestanding sign out front and the two signs on the building. I had to give you guys, it was handled internally, but full details of what was on those signs yeah. before you would approve it. Same building. So I, I, that's I all we that. always have. Like, not, it's Didn't not content. Change? I mean, they could put up uh, somebody's real estate business. I mean. Uh, the, the, didn't the content change, the law change with regards to that? We cannot regulate the content of what's yeah. on a sign. Yeah, the Reed v. Gilbert is a complicated issue uh, yes. as oh, far as sign case law. However, this, um, the signs wasn't it, like that. That was fat belly deli it was a thing. Yeah. And we can't, we can't tell him what he put, yes. uh, his the, design. Yes. Well, you could say what's on there you, because you could put anything on there not even related well, to his building. He's willing to firm it up right. and get back to us, and that would take care of the whole thing. Yeah, I have, yeah. I have no issue putting whether it be a message or, or something that complies with the regulations, obviously, but saying exactly what uh, the proposal is, just you know, maybe we're not required to do so, but we'll certainly come back. We have to come back anyway. We'll be more than willing to come back and tell you what we propose to have on both signs. That's not to say that it may uh, that would change be very in helpful. terms of internal or external oh, approval. No, nothing on change. It's just correct. Well, I, I'd also like clarification on that because when I did that, I have so many square inches of signage 
per the square footage of the building. Yeah. Yeah. It should be irrelevant what's on those signs. Yeah. I'm allowed yes. to have them. Yep. Yes. That's that. So one of you is saying we don't have the right for content, which I would agree with, but going along with what Charlie's saying, that's what I had to do. Totally so right. before we go any farther with 100 other applicants, let's resolve this issue. Yeah. So, so you, you can regulate height, size, and location, which and and you can regulate off-site signs so you can regulate saying you cannot advertise an off-site business yeah. but if pride is called ducks or whatever i mean it, it, that's up to the business so i mean you can say that you can't have any uh, pornography right. or anything like that <laughs> and, and as far as the square footage i mean you know they're they're meeting the the square footage requirements but I just don't want to hold him up on something that we yes. really don't have a right to own. Okay. That is a condition or whatever. So. Um, they, they're going to have to come back because of the requirement that uh, they, yeah, we, had, we, we hadn't noticed. We have to notify. We hadn't noticed uh, uh, Massachusetts. So they're going to have to come back, but we're trying to get as much of this squared away tonight, mm -hmm. so the next meeting will be much less. The other less. thing, uh, did you bring, uh, you mentioned the material, but did you bring colors? In terms of, I uh, did provide siding to the... Oh, the roof and, and the siding. Okay, oh, well, they got them. All right. Mr. Chair? I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. Because I have one more question. In terms of, I know that we had a discussion a while ago about locations of signs above eave lines. And, and typically, signs were not allowed, ab you know, above an eave line. You know, and, you know, so that if somebody added a gable on their building, they could put the sign below the gable, but not necessarily into the gable. I, I believe that's what our regulations say, right. but I could be mistaken. So, you know, I, I just want to make sure that, because he's showing it in the middle of his gable line, above, in the middle of the gable, above the eave line, and, you know, we need to sort of just clarify that, and just as, you know, stuff. The uh, other thing uh, I noticed in the in the readings, you have the accident reports from the state, but I don't see any accident reports from the town of Enfield. That intersection's Massachusetts. Yeah. Well, it's partial because you have uh, the area from uh, the highway entrance up to oh, right. the state line. Yeah. And then we also should have, or they didn't include, but the accident report from Long Meadow, which is one thing we're sort of waiting for, is because I, I understand from discussions uh, with the office that uh, Long Meadow is in touch with our DOT to try to, to work out something. So. Uh, that's one reason we're extending so they have a chance to come in. So I, that's that's the accident report from him. I'm sorry. I was going to say, I thought he does the traffic because I didn't know if he wanted to finish his presentation. Well, that, that was, the traffic well, I know, but <laughs> as long as he's taken things, I, I just gonna, I might as well, as well ask. Get it in there when you can. He's going to throw that one in there. Okay. Okay. And one last thing, if you clarify for me, because you used uh, that it's a restaurant. I noticed through the readings you've got it called a cafe, a bakery, a restaurant, a deli, and a grill. It's a restaurant. A restaurant that serves food, whether it be coffee or bagels or bread shops or sandwiches. It's going to change throughout the day, much like... I don't want to make the comparison to a McDonald's, but something that, that this proposal is going to offer breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All right, but I always considered the deli growing up in Boston a little bit different. I, I, is, is it a deli? A deli contestant where you have sandwiches that are fresh sliced meats, oh, yeah, meat, yeah. meats and cheeses served to order on a sandwich? Yeah. It's not a Subway sandwich. There's a Subway there already. But I, no, but, I'm not talking but, Subway. Right. I'm talking about a deli. Or in New York, or you go into New York and you go to a deli. They're they're different. I, I just curious. Yeah, they'll be. It's all food service. It's all food. Is that right? Well, yeah. I'm just looking for 
what you're calling it to try to get something set in my mind of what I get, what I'm visualizing. There'll be a grill. There'll be an active grill. Whether you want a hamburger or a pastrami sandwich or a grilled cheese, those will be offerings. Sandwiches so that'll be able that. to offer. All right. So it's, it's it'll be all all all. Subject to the Board of Health approval. All those above. The, the Central yeah. District. All right. Maybe uh, okay. In I terms just... of the vegetation or, or the added plantings, I believe we do comply with the regulations. I think there's a peculiar uh, interest, obviously, because we do buffer our residence zone. Uh, what we're proposing, there is a 35-foot uh, requirement. We do have that 6-foot vinyl fence, solid vinyl fence, uh, buffering along uh, the western border, as well as a 4-foot berm, and then plenty of sound uh, softening vegetation. Uh, again, I can get into the specifics, but we're talking about be between Bradford pears and dogwoods and um, eastern hemlocks as well. Uh, likes. The dumpster itself, again, would not be, although we could could have asked for a waiver of the buffer or a reduction of the buffer. We do feel cognizant of the individuals that live on Connecticut Ave that 35 foot uh, is appropriate. We're willing to do that and then go one step further by doing the four foot berm as well as the solid uh, vinyl fence. Whether or not we had to, we feel that obviously that would be a, an important aspect uh, of what we're proposing. Again, this is just uh, for reference, just where the catch basins are proposed. Again, Dana Steele's not present, but he did do the, the grading, the utility, the drainage. We plan on using existing utilities that come in through the street, as well as the tie-in down here, a uh, potential overflow to Route 5, which will be something that we'll verify uh, with respect to any potential work or planned work uh, with Department of Transportation. From an acoustical standpoint, again, uh, we propose the sound. It's a high, state-of-the-art, high-tech uh, ordering board here, uh, again, on the westerly side, uh, in between the car and the board itself. We've done, uh, with both the berm as well as the vinyl fence in the state-of-the-art speaking into, again, it's one that only speaks back and forth. It's not one of these high-tech or old-school headset that makes you uh, put it up like a drive through win uh, movie theater and or a, a Sonic Roland. This is one that speaks right into it. It's actually less crowded, uh, less uh, noise than what we Connecticut have or certainly uh, Enfield Street B. There was a comparison. When you get into 28 decibels, which would be the worst case scenario uh, app before it gets to the vinyl fence, that's the, that's the equivalent of a quiet room or a whispered speech is 40, 45, 50 between that. And so we don't feel that it would be um, detriment to the to the area, especially the residential. Again, we don't have any outdoor music proposed. Uh, we close at 11 o'clock, so it wouldn't be late night hours or early morning hours. It would be something that's just there for the sole purpose and again, only activated or only uh, speaking back and forth when there's an active uh, drive there. It's all sensitive, censored. The individual taking the order has the headset in their ear actually, so it's not even vocal within the store either. And they speak back and forth. And I think that's all I initially had for a proposal. I'll certainly defer to Scott Hesketh at this time to get more into traffic. Uh, but if there's any other pending questions now, I'd be more than happy to address them, or certainly after any public input. I, I, I have one question. In terms of, I'm looking at the footprint of the building and the parking areas, and I understand you know, the 11 spaces going up on, the, the, I guess, the north side of the building. And, but on the west side of the building, it seems that there's a significant distance between the island that's you know, where the, the speakers are, you know, located, mm -hmm. and the building. In terms of, you know, obviously as as space is not is is open there, you know, are people going to start parking there? Are you going to use that for storage? Is that where you might be expanding the building? It, it doesn't show that the there could be an addition on this building, but. A, a, I guess potentially if you're doing re very, very well, you might want to expand the building and move it in that direction. I, it just looks strange to have that open space without having anything there other than the fact that it's open space. And, and I'm just wondering you know, if there's a reason for that. We initially had 90 degree parking for employee parking, but based on the interpretation, we had to remove that. Uh, one of the requirements would be actually we are going to have to re uh, add a 10 foot buffer here to the west side as well so that's going to reduce the space as well as pardon my finger as well as this is the unloading zone 
of the purpose. And then, again, this is just be what was proposed initially as permeable area, but just area in terms of, again, with the 10-foot buffer, it's going to be a lot, uh, a lot more reduced. People cut through there. Yeah. I mean, it, looked, it just looks, it looked different when I looked at it. And, and I, I saw the unloading area, and the un unloading area looked like a disconnect, too. And I'm not sure how a truck would ever get in there, except if the parking, you know, wasn't being used, they can actually get in there. Other than that, he'd be parking parallel with the building or, or something. Um, but, you know, again, again it, if there's, you know, some, it, if he can show me how it's going to be softened with with the buffers that you're going to be adding, then, or, the, or the, I guess the, Islands, the, the grass islands, and that, that might make a little more sense to me. All right. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I might, I, you know, we might want to put um, bollards or, or um, not bollards, but wheel stops at the end of these, unless you are planning on having the trucks go through there and park and then go, go over there. Are yeah, they coming off hours or something like that? No, aside from. The only detriment to having the wheel stops there would be in terms of snow storage and plowing, but certainly that's something that if you think it may be a concern to have vehicles maybe invited or encouraged to drive through, then certainly there, it would be appropriate to have. Well, you uh, could use uh, Cape Cod curbs. Well, otherwise, you're going to get a, a drive through. Yeah. But, but if the trucks cars will go right through. Not want the there, curb. I, well, a, a Cape Cod. If I were right driving in and it's oh. 4 o'clock on a winter night and I'm new to the area that looks like I should just drive through there around to to the to go around the building it leaving it that way with nothing to stop me you know you're from out of the area you don't know if I was the manager of that facility right there and I got the job I would make my employees park in one two three spots right there to block it so when my delivery truck does come, he can get in there. Because exactly. Because customers parked there, but a truck has to go through there. Right. Yep. And, and like Rich was saying, to maneuver a truck around that, you're going to need those three spaces to swing that 18-wheeler around and come back out. So you really can't put stops up or anything because the trailer tires, when he's trying to cut that sharp turn, is going to go right up over him. I'm just saying is... Somebody from out of the area, they get off of 91, it's dark, uh, they pull in to get coffee, whatever, and they know it's a, because I'm sure they'll have something that says drive through some on their signage. I see this big open space. Yeah. I don't know where this, to, to order. I don't, I see maybe one or two cars parked. I'm going to drive through there and around and over to, to okay. the window. The employee's cars are there. Right. But, again, <laughs> if yeah. the employee's car is not there. Then the place is closed. <laughs> well, not necessarily. At 5 o'clock in the morning? Come so, on. so it sounds like we need to have the applicant address that area and yes. safety issues of people, uh, vehicles driving right. through there or not. And then you come whip it in because you know it, and I'm pulling out because I'm driving through it. Bam! We have an accident right there, right in the parking lot. This might be addressed with signage. Well, yeah, he did. He didn't. You guys can figure that. He didn't uh, address circulation, or is he going to address circulation? I think the traffic engineer might be in a better position to address. <laughs> I, 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 Mr. Chairman. I, they, well, they, they did address part of it when they talk about truck access because they say that they operate their own fleet of small delivery trucks. So somebody mentioned 18 wheelers, and that's not what's going to be going in here. Right. So not, I don't think that's much of a concern. More yeah. Van delivery, yeah. yeah, but even a long that, I don't know, though. If, if, if they use Cisco, which is a delivery, they use uh, large 18 wheelers. That, that van may be. Uh, prides uh, because I understand you're not it's they're not going to do their own bakery there they aren't going to bake their donuts they they are bringing them in I guess that's what the last time is that right sir that's correct the pride kitchen uh, in Springfield Massachusetts does the majority of whether it be the donuts or the, the croissants or so the, the muffins I would imagine that's what they're talking about their delivery 
But if they use Cisco, which, which is most people, most restaurants do, uh, they use the uh, 18 wheelers. And again, with the the area of this restaurant, the size of it, between the sodas and the bottled drinks, that's all something that's going to be brought in independently. We'll buy that in bulk. At our, we have a warehouse and distribution for oh, so a smaller thing. store to this effect is going to be uh, so brought over by our own employees, not a, a major Coke won't be coming in here or a, a Pepsi to that effect. One of those large uh, vans would not be coming to this specific location. Well, so, so then is the answer that only your your company delivery of vehicles would Only be used? Right, vehicles. For the most part, again, I'm not going to commit that there may be a case <laughs> where there's a, a third. I'm not trying to be deceitful, but I think the majority of, of the plan between what we do in all other locations, again, this is going to be our first standalone, but between uh, the bottled drinks and, and the coffee, as own pride, we do it through S&D, but we do it through ourselves. We don't have third party vendors to this a location like this to the food services. Again, most of our locations that offer food service also are part of the convenience store, which is different. And then we're dealing with associated grocers out of New Hampshire, and as well as Coke, the big right. bottles yeah. that come to that. This is not going to be a convenience store. This is just a food service. So the, those food particles or the food aspect of it is going to be, for the most part, uh, internally. The, the only reason I asked it that way is just so we can try to address the issue of what to put in front of the parking spaces, and maybe it's not even an issue at all. But that, yeah, well, hopefully our, well, our own our own fleet operators are familiar with the site and know how to operate it. That's, hmm. that's correct. Okay. <coughs> okay. Good evening. For the record, my name is Scott Hesketh. I am a licensed engineer in the state of Connecticut, the firm of F.A. Hesketh & Associates. Our office is in East Granby, Connecticut, and uh, we authored a traffic impact report dated April 11, 2019, which I believe should be part of the commission's package. We were asked to take a look at the existing site environs and um, the existing traffic volumes and to project uh, traffic volumes associated with the proposed development. As you heard from Mr. Channing, they're proposing a 1,900 square foot uh, cafe, bakery, restaurant type use uh, on the facility. <clears throat> uh, in order to do our report, we checked the uh, files of the Connecticut Department of Transportation. Uh, the CONDOT had uh, traffic volume counts out on Route 5 for 2013. Um, innovative data uh, uh, provided some traffic volume counts for a previous iteration of the report. They did counts in October of 2016, and both sets of that data is presented in the report. Innovative data uh, uh, counted a total of uh, average daily traffic volume of slightly over 17,000 vehicles on Route 5, with peak hour volumes of approximately 1,340 vehicles during the morning peak hour, which uh, began at 7.30 in the morning and an afternoon peak hour of 1,640 vehicles, uh, with the peak hour beginning at 4.45 in the afternoon. In addition, manual turning movement counts were conducted at the intersection of Route 5 and Connecticut Avenue. <clears throat> uh, by innovative data uh, during 2016 for the morning and afternoon peak hours, our office conducted Saturday peak hour counts at the same intersection during uh, 2019. Based on historic uh, growth data from the Connecticut Department of Transportation, we increased the traffic volumes by 1% per year to a design year of 2023. And the, uh, the background traffic volumes are, are presented in the report. In order to um, project the trip generation for the proposed facility, we use the Institute of Transportation Engineers trip generation report to standard engineering reference which allows uh, planners and engineers to project traffic volumes at proposed developments based on traffic counts conducted at existing developments throughout the country. We presented two sets of data for the Commission's consideration this evening. We, the uh, ITE data presents um, several different land uses which could be applicable to this site. Uh, they have a bread, um, one land use is the bread donut bagel shop with a drive through window. Uh, a second use is a coffee donut shop with a drive through window. And the third type of use is a fast food restaurant with a drive through window. 
And as, as the commissioner was asking, what type of service you're going to have here? Those are three different types of uses, depending on, uh, on what's going on. The coffee donut shop and the fast food restaurant are typically considered branded types of uses. It's your um, Dunkin' Donuts, your Starbucks, your Taco Bell, your Burger King, your McDonald's types of uses. Um, the bread donut bagel shop is, is more or your mom and pop type of use. Um, Raised donuts, uh, Pride Cafe, uh, that type of use. So there's different trip generation um, uh, profiles with each of those uses. Um, we believe we're more of the bread donut bagel uh, type of use. So uh, a 1900 square foot facility with a, um, a drive through window uh, at this location, we project would have about 73 uh, peak hour trips during the morning peak hour, 36 trips during the afternoon peak hour, and 73 trips again on a Saturday peak hour. <clears throat> and in discussions with uh, Pride and their facilities that they operate uh, uh, throughout uh, Connecticut and Massachusetts currently, they believe that those numbers are, are in line with the types of numbers they're getting at their other drive through facilities. In fact, they're, they're a little bit higher than what they, they're, they're seeing at their existing facilities. Now, we knew the commission might have questions about that, so we also presented the data for the other two uses as well. So when you look through the report, you'll see that um, trip generation uh, figures include both a cafe generation and a fast food slash coffee donut shop. And for the, for the coffee donut shop and the fast food restaurant, we use the coffee donut shop for the morning and the fast food restaurant for the afternoon traffic. Um, and a coffee donut shop for the Saturday traffic because those uses, it's going to be one or the other uses, but as long as we can, can handle the traffic from the higher volume of those uses, the lesser volume will, will be sufficient. And everyone knows coffee donut shops are busier in the morning, fast food restaurants are busier in the afternoon. It's a toss up on Saturday depending on, on, on what type of use you have, but we presented uh, all of that data for the Commission's consideration. Now, if it was a coffee donut shop, we'd expect 215 trips during the morning peak hour. A fast food restaurant would have 90 trips during the afternoon peak hour. And on a Saturday peak hour, we projected 161 trips based on, on those uses. Uh, we distributed the traffic to the local roadway network based on um, the observed traffic volumes of the background conditions. During the morning peak hour, we expect about 75% of the traffic to arrive from the north and depart to the south, and 25% to arrive from the south and depart to the north, following with the uh, commuter traffic volumes. In the afternoon peak hour, we would expect 70% of the traffic to approach from the south and depart to the north, and 30% to come from the north and depart to the south. During the Saturday peak hour, will be somewhat uh, uh, be more uh, equitable. We're projecting 55% coming from the south and going and departing to the north, and 45% coming from the north and departing to the south. <clears throat> and those distribution percentages are presented in the in the figures as well. We ran capacity analysis calculations for the intersection of Route 5 and the site driveway, and Route 5 and Connecticut Avenue for both the, uh, the background and combined traffic volume conditions under both scenarios. The intersection of Route 5 and Connecticut Avenue, uh, the northbound and southbound approaches operate at, with a level service A during peak hours with very little minimal delays. The eastbound approach of Connecticut Avenue operates at a level service C or B during peak hours with average delays in the range of 15 to 18 seconds per vehicle under the background conditions. Under the combined conditions, uh, uh, with the cafe bakery uh, in place, <clears throat> uh, the northbound and southbound approaches would still operate at level service A, and the Connecticut Avenue approach would operate at level service B during the Saturday peak hours, C in the afternoon peak hours, and a level service D during the morning peak hours with a 33 seconds delay on average. And that's assuming that 100% of the traffic to the site was, was brand new. Um, as expressed during the, um, I'm, I'm sorry, we didn't, we used a 20% pass-by credit, which is allowed by the Department of Transportation. Being this is a cafe, bakery, coffee, donut 
type use in the morning peak hours, um, a significant proportion of that would be passed by traffic, probably 75 to 80 percent. CONDOT limits us to 20 percent passed by traffic, um, just to be conservative. If this was a fast food restaurant or, or coffee donut shop instead of the bakery, the uh, north and southbound approaches would still operate a level service A, very little change in delays. And the side street traffic of Connecticut Bull uh, Avenue would operate level service C during the afternoon and Saturday peak hours, and a level service E during the morning peak hours with a delay of about 39 seconds per vehicle. In terms of the site driveway, uh, we didn't do any calculations under the background conditions because the site is currently vacant. Although there is a um, office retail facility and, and two residential units, or one duplex and a single family housing unit, which has some minor volume of traffic associated with it, um, we did not uh, include that in our calculations, although we did present it to you in the report for your, for your consideration. The site driveway, as uh, Jim had indicated, is proposed to be, uh, uh, there's a single driveway to service the site. It's got a single entering lane and two exiting lanes, one striped for a left turn, one for a right turn. Route 5 in this area has two northbound lanes um, and one southbound lane, which widens to provide two southbound lanes uh, immediately south of uh, the intersection and, and Connecticut Avenue. So the calculations for the site driveway uh, under the cafe bakery uh, scenario, the site driveway, again, the northbound and southbound approaches would operate level service A during peak hours. Uh, the site driveway would operate um, with a level service D for right turn movements and E for left turn movements during the morning peak hour. Um, level service B for right turn movements and D for left turn movements during the afternoon peak hour. And during the Saturday peak hour, level service B and C are projected for the site driveway. <clears throat> Under fast food scenario, in the morning peak hour would be a level service E for right turns, F for left turns. In the afternoon, B for right turns, E for left turns. And during the Saturday, level service B and D. <clears throat> now these levels of service are similar to other retail uh, commercial establishments along Route 5. Um, and we believe that they're appropriate and acceptable for this type of use on this type of uh, heavily traveled commercial roadway. In addition to looking at the levels of service of the intersection, we did a queuing analysis of the proposed drive-through window using a standard Poison distribution. <clears throat> we used two different service rates for the window, uh, assuming a 35-second service rate and a, oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> we used a 35-second service rate um, yeah, I think this is right. We assume that 70% of the site traffic would utilize the drive-through window. And based on the, uh, the the cafe use, that would be 26 vehicles per hour through the drive-through window, assuming that they can get one a vehicle leave the window every 35 seconds throughout the hour. It's not to say that you place your order and you get your food and leave in 35 seconds. But every 35 seconds, a vehicle can leave the window. So if you place your order and there's two vehicles in front of you, it might take a minute and a half or two minutes before you leave, but every 35 seconds, a vehicle leaves, leaves the window. Um, so based on the 35-second service rate, the probability that the queue would exceed three vehicles is about 1% during the peak hour for the cafe use. Under the fast food scenario, Again, assuming 70% of the traffic uses the drive-through window um, with a 35-second service rate, the probability that the queue would exceed 12 vehicles would be about 2% based on a 35-second service rate. Now, I know that there, there's, the town requires uh, to provide stacking for 10 vehicles. Um, that is provided on site with the additional distance out to the to the driveway. We can accommodate the 13 vehicles without disrupting uh, traffic on Route 5. So we believe that there's appropriate stacking on the site for the uh, proposed use. We did look at the uh, available accident data. But you talked to stacking, you will block any of the parking. 
Well, the stacking, as at most drive through uh, fast food restaurants and drive through uh, window operations, it's a one-way circulation around the site. There's parking on the uh, on the east side of the building. The, the drive through lane is on the east side of the building. So, yes, if there was 10 or 12 cars in line, it would uh, uh, temporarily block those uh, access to those spaces. And people leaving, they'd have to wait, leave a gap. And, and allow people to circulate around. There is a bypass area around the back for vehicles that are wishing to bypass the drive-through window, and they can certainly do that. That's why there's a, there's a, uh, the lane over there is 24, uh, wide enough for two, two vehicles to progress around the back of the site. So this is a standard design for uh, fast food restaurants and, and restaurants with drive-through windows. We did look at the available accident data uh, from the Yukon uh, accident depository. We did not check the uh, the town data. Um, all accidents are reported to the University of Connecticut by uh, local municipal but municipalities uh, when the accident uh, exceeds a certain uh, dollar threshold. So we believe we have accurate data, but I know the commission has asked previously about accident data, and we are coming back for another meeting, so we will get the uh, town-wide data as well. Um, that data is presented in the report. Um, in terms of the driveway uh, design, there's sufficient sight distance uh, at the driveway. Route 5 is both level and tangent, so sight distance uh, limitations do not exist along the roadway, so there's certainly a significant uh, sight distance to allow vehicles entering and exiting the site to see and be seen by, uh, by approaching vehicles. Now, we do recognize that there's a traffic signal in the state of Massachusetts just north of the site, which uh, traffic will back up uh, during peak hours. Uh, uh, most likely the afternoon peak hours when it's more prevalent because the traffic volumes are heavier in the northbound direction in that hour. Um, but the traffic, uh, during our observations, we do notice there is a queue. The queue will extend back to or past the site driveway. Then the queue dissipates and allows uh, opportunities for vehicles to to enter and exit the site um, in, a, in a safe and efficient manner. Um, oh, as with most driveways on busy roadways, you got to be a little patient, wait for a gap, and then uh, and then go for that gap when it is available. If the commission has any specific questions related to the traffic report, I'll be happy to address them, or any com comments from the public at the appropriate time. I just have one question. I mean, this traffic report was this generated by a computer or did you actually go sit out there and watch that traffic flow i've lived up in that area most of my life and when i have to make a left-hand turn out of any of those businesses be it on the north side or the east side or the west side and i have to make that left-hand turn i can sit there for more than 18 seconds sometimes it's just easier to make that right turn and then find your next left <coughs> turn to go around um I, I i'd really like to know if you've actually sat there have tried to make left turns um and in this area where you're talking about the stacking of cars pulling out of that air, that driveway to make a left turn to head north good luck that's all I can say is uh, my question is was there ever consideration instead of coming out onto Enfield Street exiting onto Connecticut Avenue coming to the stop sign there then making the left turn or the right turn just so that that queue of cars would give you a little bit more of a buffer. I'm just asking if that was looked at. Thank you. No, uh, yes, I, I have been out to the site. I've been there during peak hours. I have watched uh, traffic operate. Uh, I did not do the counts personally, but I have been there during peak hours, and I have been into and out of the uh, existing site driveway on numerous occasions during peak hours. Um, there are will be times when you have to wait longer than 18 seconds, yes. Uh, there are times when you can pull up, and, and if, if you get lucky, not have to wait at all. It is an average, um, so some people do wait longer. If there's one of the things with the traffic engineering is with if there's two vehicles in line, the first guy goes and the second guy might go right behind him, 
it's not he's waiting 18 and then the next guy waits an additional 18. They wait the same 18 seconds on occasion. So uh, it, it, it's an average. Um, yes, some people wait less, some people wait more, and some people, as you said, will make the right-hand turn, go up and, and turn around and, and come back. I, I don't doubt that that happens. Uh, it more is times than not. It, right? it is Route 5. It's a, it's a busy state highway. Uh, I understand, and it's, uh, but I'm just asking, was there ever a thought of turning this building so that you could do your drive through, <coughs> go into Connecticut Avenue, make that little right-hand turn, go in, do come back out onto Connecticut Avenue, and then go on to Enfield Street? I'm just asking that question. If it was considered, I don't think it was considered for very long for the reason that uh, we were trying to keep the commercial traffic off of the residential street of Connecticut Avenue. And then people who are exiting this site going on to Connecticut Avenue would face the same levels of delay uh, when they got to the intersection in any event. Um, true, they would be perhaps two car lengths farther away from the traffic signal, uh, providing them more opportunity. But I think separating the commercial traffic from the residential traffic to the greatest extent possible is probably uh, uh, a more preferable solution. The only reason I'm asking is almost daily when I come out of Booth Road, which just two houses or three houses are in Massachusetts. The rest of it's in Connecticut, so I have to come out that way. And I make my left-hand turn Good at point. the light. I, I would say 80% of the time am faced with a northbound car in the southbound lane because they're trying to cut in to go into the gas station and to through the curb cuts that have been made. It's a harrowing experience so it's very scary back that her up, area. I, I use the same exit. And you come out of Booth Road when the, the traffic is heavy and you got, you, they're constantly making the left turns from way back the light, the light is red for them, but they don't think it's for them. And they'll be coming north in the southbound lane, and you're either going to hit them sideways or they're going to hit you head on or they're going to hit you sideways. It's a harrowing experience. My wife won't even tries not to come out there. Uh, there's one way is a long way around is make a right turn down Roy, and uh, then you have to turn left and come out in the long meadow one up above. And it's maybe a little bit safer, but it's a long way around. Uh, the right turn lane into Booth, the people are waiting to turn into uh, the area. You've got the Long Meadow people. I mean, if people drove and obeyed the laws, it would be different. But it's, it's, a, it's a signed right turn only. You've got to watch out because they pull out. They don't want to wait. And they pull out right in your path. So you got problems both turning right down booths and you got problems of them coming north in the southbound lane. That's probably why Longmeadow wants to work on Garnet with DOT and somebody's got to do something up there. I don't know. They're fortunate they haven't had a, a death really. I, I don't know what the traffic count. I saw the, the ones that were reported. But I, I think they're a little bit higher for little red, rear, rear enders and things of that type. <coughs> I, I had 18 I, years on Tabor Road, Charlie. I'm sorry? I lived on Tabor for 18 years. Right. And I dealt with that. But the key thing you said is if people follow the law. Oh, yeah. And because everything that you're talking about, I, I agree a thousand percent, but they're all breaking the law. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, these people. They got a great business. You know, oh, they do. I love it. The, the building's and beautiful. I <laughs> going in there, but why do I go in there? Because they got great gas prices. Yeah, I know. You know? So, I know. Yeah. You That's know, a I, and, and I've been looking over That's these right. plans, and I see them that they're merging the two properties. They are. That's okay? a great, yeah. Which I think is going to alleviate some of the congestion in and out of the gas station because, and their hope, I believe, is to get some of their customers to go get a sandwich and circle out so it spreads that traffic out through the uh, two Enfield Street property.
not just their gas station. Well, you know, and you can see they tried to do it with the gravel in the front yard. Yeah, uh, I know. I know. I, I have no problem with the concept. I really like yeah. the I, concept. The concept of vehicles. It's the yeah. traffic no, that I, terrifies I, me. I agree. And maybe That's... we should have the police sit out there because when they do cut going northbound and they cut across southbound to go in and get gas, they'll go five, six cars. Oh, they do. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, yeah. They'll yeah. start at Connecticut Avenue and come north in the South Valley Lane. Can you put a police spot in one of those spots right there <laughs> yeah, for yeah. a cruiser? <laughs> I mean, well, I can I can well, say. Well, we went through this last time uh, about the traffic. About I'm not going to go on record making jokes about police officers and and cof cafes oh, and okay. coffee shops, but <laughs> I, I know that that's what Long Meadow wants to work on, and that's what really the state needs to work on. And heaven help us for the people in that area if the tolls go in. Jeez, yeah, that'll be a nightmare. Well. Yeah, but this, then they got to come along and walk our way. That's five years. Well, I don't know. Uh, I guess. We're going to be around in five years, Charlie. Well. <laughs> <laughs> we won't. Either one of us. <laughs> All right. I understand your concerns, Linda. Um, I know for myself, I always go up to that Pride Station. Um, I'll go north. And usually I will not drive down the southbound lane, but I always, that light, when that light turns, it's a blessing for me. Because, and I can take the left turn because the traffic comes back and clears out enough so I can take that left turn. Right. If yeah. it wasn't for that light there, you couldn't get in. You mean, it would be just solid traffic. So, but I do understand, you know, the, what you run into being at that intersection. That's a really tough intersection, but that's over in, Mass. But so if people that's what realize <laughs> that light faces red is facing exactly. south, yeah. that there's cars coming out from someplace, yep. it would make a difference. But well, I don't know. And that's the problem. Maybe yes. signage would do. You got cars coming out of Pride. Yes. You got cars coming out of the road that runs along the side of Pride. Yeah. Yep. It's mm -hmm. just all. They really need to line, line it. Road. That's exactly that's right. Street. They need to redo and that intersection. Either that yeah. or put move the light down to Connecticut But Avenue the question is, and have it, have it that's connected a mass. With the one that boosts. And we can't. And then you have do you a, know what I mean? Like empty space in the middle. But that's up to the state traffic. Yeah, mass needs to and, deal with mass to, that. And I, if it, it really wasn't for fits. Fred Jelsey, we wouldn't even have the, that, the light that's there. Well, we certainly hear and understand all your concerns. Obviously, we don't have control over the lawbreakers. Oh, I know you. And, well, um, you know, as much as no, we'd like to. It, it happens. And, and Understood. We do have to consider the, Understood. the residents and the, and the and safety we, of the people. And the applicant will need to go to the Department of Transportation for an encroachment permit uh, for for his, his driveway. And uh, it, we do understand that there are some discussions between Connecticut and, and Massachusetts and, and the two towns about what could be done there, but that's uh, that's not under our control either. So I, I, we understand that, yeah. but that's things we have to consider ourselves. That it's, it's the safety of the people in the area. Uh, even if you go down and try to come out any of the other side streets, uh, in fact, a lot of times, if uh, I'll go through. Uh, the, the other streets right after the uh, exit, uh, there's several down there that will cut down through the back so that I have to avoid the people pulling out into the right turn only lane and the rest, but then it, it puts traffic on uh, the upper end of Roy Street or the lower end, whatever you want to call it. That's what I would do. If I left at 5, 530, I would take the right and go to Roy Street, go down Roy Street, and come up to Booth there. Yeah, right. That's the only way you're doing it. Oh, yep. yeah. Yep, safely. But, but I mean, a donut shop in the morning, they're on the right side of the road. Yeah, that's so, good. So, I mean, so it's that's, they're going to pull in the right way. They're going to exit the right, right way. Right, yeah. Exactly. That's, yeah. yeah. Exactly. No, it's I a nice. I didn't get some police there, then, right? <laughs> But I think somebody's got to come up with a solution with that, that area. And Fred did a good job when he got the light in and did the rest. I, I know, I forget, there's some, Bass does some part of the maintenance and Connecticut does part of the maintenance and I don't know exactly what goes on. Okay, any questions? I just have one. Uh, Dana should notice there's no 
signatures on these prints. All our prints are supposed to be stamped and signed. Daniel already knows that. I don't know why he didn't. He did stamp and sign his report. The drainage report he signed and stamped, but he didn't do any, no, nothing on the prints. <coughs> one surveyor did one print, but that was it. So, and we, prints, yeah. We're not supposed to be accepting prints without signatures. It's going to be condition that the final set's going to be signed. I mean, Dana I know, signed. We're supposed to see him too. Yeah, I did produce <laughs> one live set. The question was whether or not you needed 14 live sets or one live stuff. Yeah. I produced one live with no. the copies. If you no. wanted 14 live, then that I think uh, going forward, that's something that I just uh, would have liked to have clarification on. But we'll certainly, obviously, there's no question that if there were to be an approval, the final set is to be signed, stamped. I notice on your plans now you don't extend the uh, plantings along the north boundary to the, to Enfield Street. We all I know I can, I'm not going to get into too much conversation, but there's absolutely the only thing before you and the only thing we can consider is everything that's located within the state of Connecticut. Well, but <coughs> that's why I'm asking. I understand that, and that's from our town attorney. However, if this commission decides also, because you, you have something in mind, and I know what it is that it, it is in mind, and we could require that that line goes through. So I don't know why we're talking in a mystery. Uh, and I said this to the office. Uh, and if that's the case, then we can't even give you permission to leave it open. Are you talking about the entire north boundary, or are you just talking about the access egress point? The entire north exists? boundary. I'm not. Well, that's why I asked also circulation because you didn't really give us all circulation. If you're planning to not extend that uh, north uh, plantings. Well, I think the so, only reason you're seeing the fence in the back there, Charlie, is because they don't own the house behind Pride. No, correct? but they own the That's Pride property. I, 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 They're talking about the access to the All the way front to, to Enfield Street should be planted by our regulations. Yeah. Okay. Right. So. And they are leaving it open yeah. with no plantings. Well, I know why, and you, you probably know why, too. But that's in Connecticut. Well, that's what we, we need. Can we give permission to leave it open by our regulations? Or do we have to have an agreement with Connecticut, uh, with Massachusetts that's left open? I don't know. It's open now. Well, n not legally. This, this is this I, is where I, we got to work with people. I, know, I sat there and I know, dealt with this. I know that. And just trying to get a building permit on that building, what I had to go through. And well, that's fine. You know, we know they're trying to. But he needs a variance. Is all I'm saying for that opening. I don't think so. Because the requirements does, doesn't he? Well, you're norm. The th thing is you're normally a lot you're allowed to have properties have cross easements access between it well uh, do they have them the mm -hmm. case here is that that boundary just happens to be a state boundary so if you're it's sort of like an interpretation thing is are you looking at it as a cutoff and you want to create that landscaping wall going straight across or do you want to look at it as any other property in town where you would allow those cross well, well, e access property easements in town. the property line is not in town and that's where the problem lies do you want him to landscape the state line or do you want him to landscape his property line? well because that's what i'm saying line. it's our property line that we could do and no, uh, but that's not the property line the property line is in massachusetts so you want him to run a landscape no, buffer right there's down a the state, state line. line. Well, that cuts the property in half, Charlie. Yeah. That's but what I'm saying. We have no control over the the Long Meadow and the state that's whether right, they're going to leave it open. I right. don't know. So okay. that's in Long Meadow. Exactly. I, I think mm -hmm. the question really is is you've got these two properties and where 
Yeah. All right. Maybe I, I'm not going to verbalize this right. I'm not know, doing a good job either. today. But all right. So your north line, you're, and I'm assuming, as, and we all know what that means. Uh, <laughs> so is there going to be some kind of open driveway so that people can come from the gas station over to your cafe to get their coffee or go from your cafe over to the gas station, vice wow. versa. Yes. And what area is going to be paved in that opening? And is there going to be any kind of landscaping between those two buildings? That's, thank you. And I guess the question the too is, right is the yeah, I what is see that, but right I'm now. saying is part of that right. is that is it staying? What's, What's there? I guess or between is it two buildings, I know that there's a couple of parking spaces <coughs> alongside yep. the convenience store at the Pride Station. Yep. And is there going to be any plantings between that open that? parking space because you're going to be moving your building further away and then just have like a, a driveway access I guess that's the question if, if there's access Linda, basically is, is it staying access? the same I see the this, I've been to the site many times so have I but it's is but, it staying the same because there already is access there right is there is what's currently it's there illegal access it's right legal. now but I'm just saying is legal he's taking that building to... down He's knocking that building down. Yes. The convenience store is staying here. They're moving this cafe over here. I have a driveway here. Is there going to be anything here? That's what I'm asking. Yes. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I'm that's asking. What I'm to... <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> and I'm asking is, is, is that staying the same as in, you know, you have access across the two? That's, that is, I think, a legitimate question. Right. right. Is it staying the same or is that changing? Right. That's why I was asking. That's what we're asking. Is, and is there going to be any kind of landscaping past those parking spaces and between the, dr the, the driveway? We got you got that? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we got him all confused. Yeah, he's so like, OK. okay. <laughs> he understood. Which yeah. he's a lawyer. So the garage, if we could talk about where the garage is oh, and the, the building. Yeah, right. Yes. So the, the building itself is in hey, Jim, Connecticut. Can you just grab the microphone? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or speak really loud. <laughs> no one no, is supposed to consider that, but I Correct. guess we just need some kind of visual of what's going there. So I don't know if I should work my way northbound or eastbound or westbound. So no, right. in terms of Connecticut Avenue, the two houses, I'll talk about those and then work towards uh, eastbound road toward so what currently is at for connecticut avenue that backyard half is in massachusetts and half is in connecticut much like every house or that's parcel right. that's on northern connecticut avenue All right so that there's no proposed change to the back parcel of that the duplex there's no proposed change to that when the garage comes down that is to be green. There's not any proposed pavement right now to that or anything. Now the pavement before the garage is to remain. Okay. Now obviously that's subject to La Meadow jurisdiction right, in La Meadow, right. but just so, for your advocation, if, if it makes makes it clear to put a curb along so there's not access in terms of all around the site, we could certainly put the curb to delineate the state line almost in terms of uh, I guess from four from the Connecticut Avenue eastbound up until where the garage is. And then all that, there's no, in terms of access and egress, it's proposed to remain the same uh, two way traffic uh, there at the easternly most portion of the property. But there's not uh, mutual access all the way along the state line. Okay, that, I guess that's what we were concerned that it was all. Um, no, like it's up until the in garage. Up until the garage, uh, the curb will start there, and then it's gonna well, it's gonna remain green. But there's no, I don't right. want to get into okay. Massachusetts. There's but there's no plans to do any development for a multitude of reasons from the garage westbound. Okay, that's that's basically it. Answers the, the, the answer. 
C correct, on, right. on two. And yeah. so there is where oh, the, the garage it. is actually, I think, parallel to uh, the Pride property in Massachusetts. It's almost That's almost where the corner is. And then I think Miss Hilliard lives in that house behind the current convenience store, again, in Massachusetts. But that, again, there won't be anything uh, but green space, which, although it's in Massachusetts. There's no proposed access egress western of the current garage. Oh, there's no uh, request to increase the access egress that currently exists. But there was a circulation coming down so that they can go from the drug, uh, the, 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 uh, the convenience yes. store to the yes, to the other. But it, it, and that would be in Long Meadow. Have you got to change things with Long Meadow? Or have you got anything? Uh, I, I don't know if yeah, I can ask that. You can't ask that. <laughs> well, I would imagine they may have to, I don't know. Yeah, Long Meadow will be in. You have to work out something with Long Meadow, I guess. Yeah. Obviously, if Long Meadow wanted to prevent access and egress, they could, much like if you wanted to prevent access and egress, you could. But we're asking that access and egress remain as it is now, the same northbound, southbound. I can defer to Scott to get into the engineering standpoint as to why it makes sense and from a safety standpoint why it would be better well, so, yeah, not to have people getting out and getting in. in yeah. But as far as uh, this commission's uh, concerned, uh, we're not asking for, for there to be any change. The problem, there, there's several with this property. The problem is, one, the building is in two states. Yep. And the property line pretty much starts at the corner. The state line starts at the corner of Pride and 2 Enfield Street and runs on an angle. Well, so if, if Massachusetts don't allow them to access their Massachusetts property, there's an issue. And that's everybody shaking their heads down. This is what we dealt with. So I, I understand what they're going through. And I'm not saying we look over, look overlook anything, but this is something that doesn't exist. And it exists here. And yeah. what he said is correct. They're taking it and making it less non-conforming. Mm -hmm. You know, I told you when it was a fireworks place, mm -hmm. state came in and ran a piece of red tape right down the floors in the building and said, you got to be 10 feet on this side of the red line because they're illegal in Massachusetts. Uh -huh. So it, it, it just been going on and on. Probably since the building was built, they're trying to make it right. Traffic is a huge issue. I agree. Yeah. But again, that's well, even out of our purview, right? No, no I was yeah, just yeah, wondering yeah, if is. there was no. going to be any green space between the buildings. I think they're trying to make it look like yeah. one property. Well, well they'll yeah. make it look the, like one property but they'll have you know that little driveway mm -hmm. to go to the convenience store and then behind that will be green space that's all i i think i got it in my brain okay <laughs> <laughs> anything further no. oh. okay be, uh, we do have to continue it for at least the next meeting and uh, yep. had you been in touch with the long meadow we did send out the notice to Long Meadow, so they'll be receiving it. And if they have any comments, they can forward them to us or come to the meeting. So. Sorry for that. Well, are there any other comments from the commission? Well, well, you know, you know, I, I guess just so that we can clarify that this last. 45 minutes of discussion that seemed awfully gray. You know, I, I guess what, what they're really wondering is if possibly you can prepare a plan that shows, you know, colored plan that, that might show where islands or grassy areas might exist versus paved areas, because that would define definitively where the axis between the two properties and the two d states actually occurs. So that, and it's not, would, would not be a formal, you know, presentation. You know, it won't be a, a formal submitted, but it would be a formal, you know, just a presentation that to clarify exactly what, you know, the nebulous conversation that we just had was a bow in terms of, and I think that's what they're trying to say is, where is there an island and where is there paving? And, and how does the, the two integrate between the two properties or the two states that, that exist at this location? And, and that would, you know, a, a picture tells a thousand words and a picture might tell 10 million words in, in this we situation, so. Well, because of the traffic coming in is maybe meeting traffic coming from the gas station. I don't know. But that's why I asked the traffic pattern, but it makes it difficult to talk about. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, on sheet uh, 
P3, there, there is a colored drawing of the site which shows the landscaping. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. of course, the, uh, the pavement is all in white, but uh, I, I think that there's really nothing shown. It looks like you're paving right up to the property line. Is that, is that a fair statement? Or, or right up to the uh, state line? That's correct. Yeah, so if, if you would, if, if you could show on the plan uh, maybe a, a 10 foot buffer strip of, of what, what are we looking at to the north of the state line? Mm -hmm. Right now, it doesn't show anything. You're just paving right to it. That plan doesn't show. That plan does. The big plan in your yeah. folder does show it. Yeah. It shows an island and everything there yeah. right to the property. Yeah, that's a different. I, I believe I understand what you're looking for, and I think we could work with the applicant to, to make sure that it, it's a little bit clearer visually. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of what we're looking for. Not because we want to say yes or no, but because we just want to be able to yeah. see, understand. Right there. The lighting that works. But that's why I was asking. I mean, you say the property line is up in Mass, but we can't talk okay. about Mass. So, you know what I'm saying? So, we just had a 45 minute discussion about asking what they're asking for. Well, I know. That's why, if you go to their construction plans, it shows what they're asking for. What page? What, what page are you, are you referencing in the plan? Yes. C1. C1. Yeah, C1. Yeah. What is it showing? Yeah. It doesn't show everything. It doesn't show anything. It shows right to the property line. Yeah. But it's state line. But and they, the property yeah. line. Right. So they can do a colored rendering oh, with that in mind, and yeah. it'll be more visually um, achievable to understand what's happening. Yeah. Can we move to continue? Mr. Chairman, can we move to continue then? I'm sorry? Can we move to continue? Well, I... He wants to know oh, if you can move to continue. The public hearing. Well, I don't know if these people are finished yet. Or, uh, well, I think Lori so. said that she would work with them because she had a good idea of what it is we're asking yeah. okay. and what they're going to give us. So I think okay. maybe we might want to move along. All right. Don't need to look anymore so, if you can't yes. find it. Well, any other commissioner have a question or a, a, a comment? Again, uh, I think we're further along than we have been in other before. Actually, it's the best package we ever had on this pro I'm sorry. project, though, I'll tell you that. Does anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against this application? Yes, sir, please come forward, if you, you will, gentlemen. And you do have... Uh, <coughs> An opportunity to come back if you wish. Yes, sir. Name and address, please. Hi, my name is uh, Jeff Scott, and I live at 17 Connecticut Avenue. And I'm always interested in what's going on down that end of the street, as Charlie can attest and some of the other members who've seen me here before. Uh, just as a, a footnote regarding the crossing of the southbound lane to get into Pride, when that Pride uh, was O'Connell's and it was made into a convenience store and that light went up, there was a do not enter sign on that south cut I remember at the that Pride sign station. And, the and, it, and, it, and it was pretty much disregarded. Yeah, and, and as you know, if you don't have somebody holding people accountable, I just saw something in the paper yesterday. You're looking for money for the state? Up the fines on the violators. Start stopping all these people that are going 80 miles an hour and charge them 500 bucks. We'll slow things down a little and we'll get some money. But that's off point. The, and, and as you, I'm sure, Charlie, I don't know how many of the other members re remember the 
many wars I've had with uh, McDonald's, uh, but it was over speakers because they originally came in and said that they would do all their business person to person. Uh, my concern here, and again, all we can do is go from a drawing and saying, well, we designed this with an acoustically responsible situation, and it's only going to be as loud as a quiet room near the six-foot fence. But on the other side of that fence, 10 or 15 feet away, is a home that was purchased with a home next to it. Now it's got a, a six-foot fence with a business in it. And there's also going to be a dumpster at the back of that property that now that, that property owner is going to have to tolerate the existence of. If nothing else, I would ask that we do as you did at McDonald's and limit that commercial traffic in terms of deliveries. And I'm not saying a van coming in and dropping off muffins, but certainly the picking, the picking up a trash Limit that to, I think it was 8 o'clock in the morning that you asked McDonald's to wait until. Uh, for the sake of the next door neighbors. Again, we're, we're talking about business local here, folks. That was designated many years ago by our forefathers for a reason. It wasn't so that we could just put businesses up and do whatever we wanted, knowing that there's neighbors next door. And uh, now we're presented with people who own real estate that now all of a sudden, because somebody had an idea to put in a coffee shop, now they're, now they're next to a business. I don't see them here tonight, so <laughs> I guess it's not a big issue. Uh, I, I, I like the whole concept that they've come up with. Um, I do appreciate that they haven't put any cuts out onto Connecticut Avenue. And uh, as you folks know, because you live at that end of town, it, it's, it's just going to exacerbate an already uh, challenging traffic situation, no matter what engineers say. I mean, I know what it is to go out there and try and take a left onto, onto uh, Route 5 from Connecticut Ave. And many times a day, it is a challenge. And, and again, as you say, sometimes you just take a right and go down someplace else and cut over around because it's, it's, it's just too much of a nightmare. Uh, and, and when I started hearing numbers like they're anticipating as many as 70 vehicles going through that during the, the morning peak, I think, that's a lot of cars, folks. You know, and it's not just the noise of the cars, but now you got all that emissions from the cars that are just a step away from the neighbors. I'm not saying I'm against it, but I, I'm, I am concerned about the impact on the local neighborhood. Also, that we're opening a can of worms if we're going to allow a speaker over there What's McDonald's going to say? Where's our speaker? How come you don't let us have one and you let Pride have one? Now, maybe they, they could collaborate with Pride and come up with this very low acoustical impact, and that would be fine. <laughs> OK? Somehow, I don't think they're going to be in a collaborative mood, but because uh, Pride's certainly going to suck business off of them. But uh, those are just some things I wanted, some seeds I wanted to plant with you folks as you, as you work through this, because I know it's been a very long uh, process, and I give Bob a lot of credit for coming up with the idea and having the tenacity and, and the team to, uh, to pursue it and present it to you in such a professional manner. But uh, yeah, tra traffic is a biggie up there. And the other thing that we were specific to McDonald's about, because it is business local, that any lighting on the property stay on the property. Don't have big bright lights set up so that they're shining up into Connecticut Avenue or Long Meadow, but I know they make lighting that shines down where you tell it to shine down, and that's all that's legally required is that you light your specific area. They have done that. They have done it, yes. and I would expect that honestly because they are—they do seem like a very responsible neighbor. 
And I mean, uh, I met Bob here one day, he gave me his business card, his personal email. I sent him an email one day, I said, gee, Bob, I said, uh, something's going on the end of the street. That property hasn't been maintained. I mean, the, the grass was getting long in that. And he wrote, he said, oh, my guys are running behind. He says, they're going to take care of that Monday. Sorry about that. And they did. They did. He, he is very, very. The station's always, they're out there sweeping. the. Well, the, it's, the, the, it's in the name. Yep. And that's how he rolls. Uh, I mean, I, I, I've, I've met the guy, and I believe that's, he is trying to be a responsible uh, neighbor. But uh, th those are just a few thoughts. And obviously, this is going to be continued. So uh, I'll see you again. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and thanks for doing what you do. Oh, thank you. Because not everybody is willing to give up. I, I mean, it's, I, I realize there's a lot more to this than just showing up on a, every other Thursday. You guys got a lot of responsibility, and I appreciate what you do. Thank you. Gentlemen, you wish to respond? Did you ever have a donut and a coffee in there when it was a donut shop, Charlie? Because that's what it was built at, it was and I believe it was built bef yeah, yeah. before it, the houses were built. Yeah, it was. So a, I just want to clarify. You it can't say bakery. there were houses there and then a business because the business was there first, the same business it was a, that they're trying to put lot, back. Sir. It was it a bakery what? and it had a big fire. I understand. That's why they purchased that house and took it down. And there's nothing being built on that property. They actually bought that last house they, uh, to create the buffer. So they, I, they went above and beyond. There's no distance there now. Just to do it. Uh, Right. Other than they had a smaller lot, then they had to go to to uh, right. Building yeah. Board of Appeals just to get their. Well, let's not carry on that. Mm -hmm. But uh, what he said was right, and a lot of people don't know it. That building was a bakery. They had donuts, plus they had donuts coffee and donuts. donuts. They baked donuts. there. Donuts yeah. They they what? baked. Yeah. yeah. It's a good place to meet. They baked on there, and they had a big fire. <laughs> And did you buy it after the fire or? No. No, it was no. A, something after the, bike the fire. Shop, I, I forget after what that. Was it was. Yeah. yeah. So it's been a lot of things after the bakery, but it originally was a bakery. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. I think just a response to Mr. Scott's comments in terms of uh, the buffer and the, and the trash pickup. Uh, so again, there is a 35-foot buffer with a berm and the vinyl fence. Uh, the trash is actually not next to the, it's on the other side of the buffer. We're not requesting any uh, waiver of any buffer or any consideration of that. If there, the commission's inclined to go further beyond the noise ordinance that does exist and is enforceable in the town uh, to impose a restriction onto the trash pickup, the hours of the trash pickup, obviously there'd be no. We do because some of the trash companies pick up and Five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Five o'clock in the Some, morning. Uh, we use summer sanitation out of East Windsor. I don't think they leave till six for the ones that we personally use. But yeah. that, notwithstanding that, if I think for the individuals that live on Connecticut Ave, uh, if you want to say no trash pickup yet before eight o'clock in the morning or whatever you, you feel yeah, well, there's absolutely what... no no discussion with that and just along the lines of the, the speaker and the audible system as well again I do <laughs> think we comply with the, the requirements I'm not privy to any prior uh, discussions or maybe the, the regulations and standards have changed but again we've done an analysis as required and uh, based on the location and the area of it as well as the berm uh, we do feel that uh, we comply is not going to be uh, any concerns and, and if there were I think Mr. Scott and all of you may attest to that obviously we're going to be responsible I think it's business local and we are actually a local business I mean, just does up travel right and it makes mysterious doings for example I know it's another place in town uh, well it used to be an envelope company and the sound bounced off of I don't know where a hill or something and disturbed people that it shouldn't but uh, it it, you are close to a residential area, and it has been required at McDonald's because of their proximity to residents, both across, but they don't have the buffers that you have, so it's up to the commission. I, it may make a difference. I don't know. And you have the berm and back, so, so in, a, in a fence, which McDonald's doesn't have. Yeah, it's a fence, but that's all. Mm -hmm. And there is work that out next meeting. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Everybody 
right. Okay, motion to continue. Second. So I can't make it. I'll make a motion. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we continue public hearing 2939 to Enfield Street to our next meeting on May 9th, I believe. Second. Okay, all in favor? Okay, opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. And they've done a lot. I tell you, this is a good proposal compared to the, well, the others. first started. Really good. Okay. When we first started. If we can get the two states together to go. We're now there's a job. We're not going to live that long. The the <laughs> there's a job for our uh, <laughs> state's representative. Let's get Tom busy. Yeah. If Fred could do it, Tom can. Okay. You're secretary, right? You could get the. You're secretary of the town oh, committee. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm uh, vice. Second vice. Second vice. All right. Well, you can, you can get, get uh, vice. You can get time to busy to straighten out the traffic up there. Yeah, well, you could get get our people to, too. To of course, you got a there. you got a senator that's up there too. That's right. <laughs> you should be able to work on it too. Business. Okay, they want me on other business. Want? 90 Elm Street. Target. Who's the presenter here? Jen. <laughs> Jen. Me. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, As you received in your packets, and then there is a supplemental item at your desks this evening. Target is proposing a drive up area um with on, Jim. oh can you hear me no we can't yeah oh testing <laughs> you have such a soft voice <clears throat> um so they are proposing um drive up uh spaces for pickup items um and they want to put they want them to be lit and solar powered uh, the specifications are shown in uh, your packets, and they also provided us with a picture, um, which is uh, was received at your desk, along with questions that the office had and their responses. Um, so basically, we weren't exactly sure how to take this in according to the regulations. It wasn't really clear. Um, Freestanding signs can be handled administratively, but uh, in one section of the sign regulations, it says they, can, they can't be more than 20 feet tall, and then it specifies in the business regional section in a different section that they can't be taller than six feet. And they're proposing, I believe, 12 feet with the solar on top. Um, and that solar um, would have to come before you with a site plan um, but we weren't sure if you were going to consider those signs as freestanding signs or if you were going to consider them as directional signs within a parking lot, which really isn't regulated. So we were looking sort of for an interpretation. Would you be open to seeing a site plan for these, um, for just the solar or? Um, Charlie? Yes. I have a question. Um, not about the sign but where you're putting it if i understood it correctly it's going in where the four police people park now the four parking spots for the it police says no, yeah. no those are farther down no those are closer to the south side so you're not taking the handicapped or the police no okay thank you it's a wrong way as a pole. i thought she told yeah. me it was it's right here yeah. Only 10 feet tall. Yeah, 12 feet. Uh, Mr. Chair? I, yes, Please. go ahead, Because I, I guess, you know, what, what we have to realize is that, you know, this isn't really a solar system in terms of, you know, there's solar, you know, every house has a solar light. You know, I know we have 
30 million in my backyard somewhere. But but it's one of those kind of things where, you know, if it's a self-contained unit, it, it probably is not a solar generating system. So I think that we don't necessarily need to see the preview or it doesn't have necessarily have to follow our solar regulations. You know, as long as it, it's not an eyesore, number one, mm -hmm. and it's it's proportional to the sign that it's on. It just it can't be disproportional move. where, you know, they, they're they using it to power something, and then, you know, it, it's got all kinds of TV antennas and everything else associated with that, so that, that doesn't yeah. work. But if it's sort of a self-contained unit that utilizes solar power to manifest some power so that it, it can function properly, I, I don't think that it necessarily needs to meet our solar regulations. It's, so, sta it's stationary too. Right. And, and so I think in that vein, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. In terms of the, the other beacon light, we can discuss that. <laughs> okay. I thought she was talking about what we authorized. I don't think there's a place on the, uh, the road. Oh, you're talking Dharma? Yeah. yeah. That's well, until later. They had the, over the, their parking area, uh, the dumping the company. The, oh, yes, they haul it. I have a quick yeah, question, yeah. Jen. That's what I thought they were yep. talking yeah. about. Is any part of this going to be covered? Well, uh, like, like the parking spaces covered? Yeah, the, 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 the two parking spaces that they will be, t or four parking spaces that the, is any part of that going to be covered? No, they're not <laughs> going to cover them. Um, they're just going to be striped, and then they're going to have those um, those signs just saying these spaces are designated, and they're going to be no, lit they're up. They're do like USA hauling. When, uh, no, no. Oh, fuck. So basically they're just the taking four spaces, putting, I don't know, mm -hmm. two two poles, I'm yep. guessing, yeah. uh, in their parking lot and mm -hmm. designating that. So that's kind of, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's kind of just a directional. Yeah. It's a it, it, sign okay. within their, it's not even a sign. Well, I'm, a, really. I'm, I mean, com I'm confused because there's a drive up. It says drive up, like somebody's going to be there attending to the vehicles. Park there and they'll come and bring the stuff out to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what like You're shop. You're not getting. They're not. It's not Walmart, like a valet. Uh, stores. All the stores have places for customers to park, and they bring their groceries out to them. They'll bring their items out yeah, to them. Yeah, it's just like. So yeah, it's yeah, just like the, that. It's like a drive. But, but those places are typically against. Against the uh, very close to the that's building, that's and there I don't see any place where the people would be bringing the items out. Well, most of the spaces close to the building are fire zones, fire lanes. And yeah, you can't Walmart get close to the building. Is loading their cars with this very same thing in the fire lane, and you know that's going to stop. So, so is uh, Home Depot. <laughs> right, so I see them as trying to do the right thing here mm -hmm. and make a designated mm -hmm. area that yeah. people don't pull in the fire lanes. Yeah. Is there any exits here? Yeah. Because I think there, there's a there's an aerial view where they have an island adjacent to the to the drive through or the, or the fire lane, and, oh, and yes, it's right island, off yeah. the island. So basically, it's it's as close as you can possibly get to the building without violating the fire an lane. There's right. an island there to protect people from just getting hit by cars that are in a fire lane. <laughs> And then they're just going to have a poll that says, this is where you pick it up, so that people don't get confused as to which one of these islands they're going to go to. Yeah. So I, th I think the concept makes perfect sense that you need a beacon or something to attract your eye if you're going to be looking for this thing. And they have the, the spaces protected against traffic. So it, you know, it's just a matter of how high do we want to allow them to use put the sign, whether 12 feet is too high or whether, you know, it, and again, depending on, you know, if there's a truck parked next to something, yeah. that it has to be elevated enough so that people can see it as they're driving so they don't get confused and they're not looking for something that, that is, is not findable. So again, I think that you, all we have to do is come up to the decision as to whether the height is, is appropriate or not. Well, one question I do have is, because of the accessibility of these spaces to the door, the side door, are they going to be using that to bring stuff out? And if they do, they should have a crosswalk. That would be my personal. I would think that would be really important to have a crosswalk there yep. if they're going to use that door um, just for the safety reasons. Because you do have that island, which is great, but they're going to come around that island. So 
unless they're accessing down the middle of it. That's what I'm saying. Are they going to use that? So we need, I would think it would be important to have a crossing area there. Other than that, I mean, I don't see it. I think definitely what Rich is saying. The size of it is probably, yeah. There's so many people walking across there now that you couldn't go more than a mile and a half an hour anyway. Yeah. <laughs> that way at least there, yeah, somebody safe. does walk in it. I <laughs> store right here and there's a stack over there. They're going to find if they run them over. <laughs> the bill's about 20 at least. Yeah. So, gentlemen, let's uh, not even see this. Yeah. So, if you want us to handle this administratively and look at this as a directional sign, which really we don't regulate. We can do it that way. Um, and the solar. It is, yeah. Yeah, if you, yeah, you want to say that it's, um, if well, you guys want to. similar wanna... to what Stop and Shop just had, mm -hmm. the parking. Yeah. yeah. So Only theirs was on their building. This is oh, well, they had, parking. Well, they had parking too. And right. we're trying to encourage solar anyway, so that's a good use. Right. Yeah. I think it's great. Well, lockers, right. but they had a special place for them to park for the lockers. Right, but I think they came to us just for the lockers. They didn't come to us for the parking. It was part of they it. Had a yeah. out Par to parking was part of it too. Yeah. They, it was but they was just restriping. They weren't putting up signs. Well, they decided not to put up signs after all. And you might want to encourage them um, with the striping, like Mary mm -hmm. said. You can't make them do it, but you might want to encourage them for safety reasons. For Target? Oh, for the crosswalk. Yeah. 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 There should be a crosswalk. There, yeah. mm -hmm. warning anyone, yeah. Any, I say uh, go for yeah. it. So do you guys want to authorize it, admin approval? Or? How about the height? Somebody mentioned height. It's under the side. Yeah, but somebody was said they do you want to limit it? What's our, what's our, you can't go well, taller than that because any van or anything, yeah. Yeah, you won't be able to see it. Well, it's really, I mean, it's how you want it. I, I guess we were looking for an interpretation on what kind of sign you were going to classify this as because it's, if it's freestanding, then you regulate the height of the sign. If it's directional, we don't have anything that regulates just interior directional signs. It's directional. So. <laughs> directional, but, you know, not 50 feet tall. You need a... Down is a direction, and that's a drive up, so... It's <laughs> <laughs> drive down. Uh, do you need a vote? Do you want a motion? Uh, sign is on all four sides, I think. Jen? Yeah. You, see it. you want a motion? Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ken, make a motion. I make a motion that we let it be handled administratively. Second. Oh, all right. Wow. Well, all in favor? Yeah. Opposed? It's unanimous, I think. So moved. <laughs> <Jen>. <laughs> so moved. Okay. Uh, The application to be, uh, commissioners correspond. I need correspondence first. Uh, there's one other item, I think, oh. that was on there yeah. under the other business. It's really just an interpretation that we were looking for. Oh, liquor permit. Okay, sorry, I didn't see it. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, this is good. We have a very preliminary proposal from someone who would like to install outdoor entertainment in association with a restaurant in town. And with the entertainment that they're looking to put outside, there might be some music and um, live music no, <laughs> just live uh, live music. So there's just in the regulations, in the tables for business, um, the, the tables address liquor permits with any entertainment. And this establishment would sort of fall into that category as being regulated in table 5.20 with just a special permit. But when you go to outdoor dining patios, and this would be associated with a restaurant use, you prohibit audio systems. So, is this a new um, restaurant or an existing restaurant that wants to kind of expand? Uh, no, it's they, it would be a new restaurant. 
Okay. Um, my concern, one of my concerns would be where it is. You know, uh, right. it's like it's like the pride thing. You know, if it butts up against um, residential, you don't want a live music because kids have to sleep and parents it, have to sleep. It doesn't, it doesn't. So I think I'd want a little more information. It's way too vague. Could yeah. Right. Thank you. I mean, if it, let's pretend it was, say, where Longhorn is located. There's no real houses right near it. Having outdoor entertainment would be fine. Oh. Yep. But if it were um, across the street from where Pride Station is, mm -hmm. and it's residential surrounding, <clears throat> that would not be a good place. Yeah. So I guess we need to know where. So it's a little too big. Location is. A, yeah, you know, location would be important. Important is, to is know. Is it in a shopping center? Yes. But even yeah. then, I. So then I know exactly what we're talking about. So. E e even then, it depends on how loud that sound is going to be. You know, how is it going to be amplified? Right. Um, it could be at a shopping center, but it could be very annoying to have yep. that sound and, and, and it could be a weekend when you're home um, my thing is if you change the regulations which I have no problem with changing regulations but you have to be very careful what you wish for because once you put it in a zone you cannot regulate how noisy it is or when it plays oh, right so so it is a special permit but what you don't allow is audio systems. So if they, let's say they had live music and somebody, and it's not amplified, I think that might be the question. So like if it's a, a, an acoustic guitar player. Yeah, yeah. but um, the, the thing that is. That would be reviewed when you saw it, but yeah. would, you, would you allow that yeah. if it was in the right place? Well, we've allowed acoustic um, in um, other areas and um, it's grown to like a five-piece live band. So, yeah. it, you know, <laughs> once it's approved, it's there forever. So um, I'd be a little hesitant. I, you know, I, it's just me, but I, I really think it's too vague for me to decide personally whether I think it's a good idea or not. And I wouldn't want somebody to come in based on, um, well, maybe you can do it or maybe yeah. you can't. Well, yeah, that was something that we were looking to clarify, um, just because even if this were just any restaurant anywhere, like what zones would you want to see that? Because maybe that would need to be a, a text well, amendment. And that's the, that's the problem, as you well know. In Enfield, the zones are all over the place, so one zone can be like totally, totally um, businesses, like, like uh, over by Palumba, but then you can not then you can have another zone that's an unallowable use, but it's like a church and, and a, a neighborhood. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I just don't feel comfortable. It's kind of. You gotta know exact location yeah. for it. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, but even then you have to be careful because if you approve it for that location, then any other business that wants to do it that's zoned in the same way. Yeah, but it's a special permit, so. Yeah, okay, the special permit, you, you cannot to say to people, uh, well, we like this one, but we don't like that no, one. but you have to have reasons. You're in a shopping plaza surrounded by nobody. You're in a residential so neighborhood with 50 houses around. Exactly. That's why I'm saying, mm -hmm. is there some way yes. you could write uh, or change the ordinance so that it would depend on location? We're saying mm -hmm. that the, yeah. the use yeah. depends on the location. Yeah, so it would really, it looks like that type of amendment would be, in this case, to um, Section 5.20.2, um, letter F, regarding uh, the outdoor dining areas, because um, that's the area, that's where they prohibit the, um, the audio systems. So instead of prohibiting audio systems, it looks like we would just be changing it to, um, it's at the commission's discretion, you know, I, I, again, I think that, you know, we're, we're having a discussion regarding audio systems versus live music in terms of, you know, I think that I would be okay with a, a 
a string quartet or a, a, a guitar player, but they're not audio systems. In terms of as soon as you have an audio system, realistically you can crank up the volume as loud as you can. Right. You can only strum a guitar so loud before it, it, it won't resonate any more sound. So I, I think that I'm fine with prohibiting the audio systems. You know, possibly we can amend it by saying, you know, there will, could be some musical accompaniment to, you know, certain events or festivals that are going on, but they cannot be amplified. And I think that that's really what, what we're trying to achieve, is the fact that you, you the, the noise should not be able to travel a long distance. I know that I have friends of mine who live next to, they don't even live next to a venue in terms of, you know, where they, they have live concerts. And they live three miles away, but when you're visiting them, you could hear yeah. a venue that's three miles away. And it's, it's one of those kind of things where you can't necessarily tell what it is, but you can hear that thump, 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 thump of the bass and everything else. And that's because of the amplification. So I think that realistically, we should differentiate between amplified noise and, you know, again, generally created music, yeah. music that, well, that I think, doesn't travel that far. I think the other thing is, too, it depends upon when, like what days of the week. Correct. But, I but, think but those it's still are important a special, special well permit. But, but I, you know, I, yes. would not, yes. I would not fool around with the audio systems. And I think that the audio, audio systems should be, again, pro yeah. prohibited. Well, I think Perhaps that, we could limit the number of musicians that are playing at one time. Like? Yeah, do you just put it on the decibel? Yeah, I no. can't. How many restaurants have you gone, sat on a patio, there's light background music playing, you're drinking a drink, a glass of wine, whatever, having a nice dinner, you can hear each other talk, it's just background music playing. And if I'm correct, we have several restaurants oh, in yeah. town, when you walk up to the doors, they have that nice background yes. ambiance music playing. Yes. The same thing, a lot of restaurants do it. I understand what you're talking about, but we have noise ordinances in town already, and if we put in the regulation, I don't know what decibels, yeah. I don't know what they are, but a certain decibel, that's it. You know, and you're in violation if you exceed that. That covers what you're talking about, yeah. heavy metal, hard banging, but something like that, if they're in a area that nobody's around, nobody would hear, nobody would care. But if you're somewhere where it Depends matter, what it hit, what it bounced. Well, the decibel would not be a good thing because uh, the decibel is uh, regulated by the police, but the police and the zoning enforcement officer have to go out there, and it usually doesn't happen. The last time I knew, they didn't have the equipment. They had the equipment. They, yeah, but it wasn't, they, it's not calibrated, wasn't calibrated regularly. It's well, not a good thing to do that, Ken. And it has to, if you use it, it has to be calibrated every so often. And, <laughs> and I think another, another thing to consider is if, in fact, you're going to have a band and not an individual with a guitar then you're going to have an audience. And so there's also the noise from the audience. <laughs> you I think know, that's you, why it's a special permit, because it's oh, sight specific. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. The other factor would also be, depending on where it is, if it's in a plaza, where are you going to be, on the sidewalk and in the parking lot? Mm -hmm. That's the other thing you think well, the, That's what I'm talking about, the audience as well. How many people are going to be there appreciating the music? So. <laughs> I think we need to know the specifics is the bottom line. I think, uh, I don't know. So well, again, I guess location what, is everything. Yeah, what we're looking for with this, before, before any applications are filed, I guess what we're looking to do is sort of get ahead of this, this issue. I think the way staff interpreted it was that audio systems didn't really include live acoustic music, but if they wanted to amplify it or put some light music outside on that patio if they didn't have a li have a, a live band over there if they wanted to do all of that and if it came to you guys and everything got approved or you guys were ready to approve everything except that and that was a deal breaker we didn't want them to go through the whole process and have that be an issue 
Yeah, well, it's like it's like if you stand outside a restaurant oh. and you're waiting and you hear the music, you know, it's yeah. nice and light and whatever. I mean, that's one thing. I, I, it, it, what are, kind of are we? What are we talking about? Mm -hmm. well, but to answer that's your question, though, it, audio, it, the way we're interpreting it, audio system is anything that's amplified. That's that's what we're saying. Right. And right. audio system is anything that's amplified. So if it's one guy with a guitar and he's got an amplifier, yes. that's already in violation of this. Mm -hmm. That's what we're saying. If a hard rock cafe were to come to town, yeah, they play hard rock. Yeah. Now we're not going to put that where the whole neighborhood's right behind it. But if you put it in, but it's not outside. The yeah. Square, if they had an outside patio. Yeah. Yeah. Hard rock cafes don't have outside. I'm using okay. them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could always have the music inside and piped outside. There's one or two restaurants in town that do do that. Yeah. Live bands. A lot of, of yeah. places have live bands in town and do it inside. But I understand the, why people want to do it outside. I do when it's a nice night, so on and so forth. But yeah. I get we have to be careful. Snow, no. So, so what we're hearing is that you don't want any amplification for outdoor music. Sounds you would terrible. consider Sounds by terrible. special use permit, mm -hmm. um, you know, live music as long as it's not amplified, so and, and 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 July? and it's. <laughs> Yeah, how does, the town, how does the town deal with the 4th oh, of July? Get permit. Town Green. You get permit. a little That's so a that's special right. permit that's and a that's a, permit. a special right. event. So I don't want to say no amplification. It's a special permit. Yeah, it and should we go. Will address it that's a, that's a special special permit or a special event. So that's that's a one weekend of a year as opposed to every but night. The regulation, but they come in. A golf course, and in the center of the golf course, they got a clubhouse. And yeah. they have outside seating. They can have all the bands they want. I don't want to limit that. But it would be a special permit. You come in, tell us where you're going to be. Yeah, we right. make the educated decision on it. And that's that. But I what? Mean, anybody's going to know. Yeah. OK, let's go fly in 50 houses. Oh, well, yeah. well, basically, again, even like, like with Mount Carmel and so forth, they, they yeah. They're all again. That's a special event. They're special yeah, events, exactly. right? And the neighbors all know it's coming, right? Right. You right. also might want to check with the fire department because Chicago Sam's applied for um, a patio to do um, music and stuff, and um, they couldn't do it because they were in the fire zone. So, if it's in a shopping center and it's in the front of the building and they can't put it in the back or on the side. It wouldn't fly anyway, even if we said it would fly. Fire yeah. department, would, fire marshal would shut it down. A lot to be considered. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sitting there, nice, quiet music. Oh, yeah. you know? mm -hmm. I'm not even saying a live band. Just mm -mm. Yeah. yeah, he well, pipes it out. Yep. Um, the restaurant's there, isn't it? It's closed. The, is the restaurant closed? Yeah. No kidding. The one with the TV outside? Yeah. Okay. Good? Yep. You want to read oh, yeah. back I'm what good. you have because there's so much going on? So um, I guess what I'm hearing Please, is... Please, let's uh, listen so we know what's going on. You would be open to hearing these on a case-by-case -case basis when it comes to outdoor audio systems. Um, and if that's the case, because it says no outside audio systems are permitted at all, that would require a text amendment to say that you can consider them on a case-by-case -case basis. With a special use permit. Yes, with a special use special permit. Special use permit, right. Which is, yeah, it's already in there. It's, it's a minor, it would be a minor amendment, but if that's what your consensus is, we can work on that and get it going. Well, a lot more restaurants or, or places want these outside places. Mm -hmm. I know Jiggy's even came in, but they didn't have the room. Was, uh, well, they, they have food. Did you just say Jiggy's? <laughs> <laughs> what is Jiggy's? They did. They came in for a patio in the back. They have food there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is Jiggy's? Yeah. I don't know. I've never been there. Hot dogs, beans, whatever. Okay, but go ahead. I didn't know that. I'm like, okay. Fire food is gone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Yep. Okay. We'll special get use that going. Okay. And. Uh, okay. Application uh, now. Commissioner's correspondence. 
Anything? <coughs> yes. I'm sorry. Middle Road and South George Washington and Hassett Avenue. Trucks are gone. Yeah, I yep. noticed that the other day. <laughs> that that was Rick. <laughs> Trucks are gone. He must have sold them, and somebody actually took them. <laughs> so now we got his the old skids and all that stuff that has always been. <laughs> Commissioner's correspondence. Anything? Director of Planning report. So um, I will be presenting. Um, the budget for development services on Saturday to town council. We will be looking for um, a land use specialist, kind of like what Barb Galovic used to do. I mean, working with uh, the notifications and the legal notices and correspondence yeah. to the applicants yeah. and things of that nature. Um, so I'm hoping to that that will we be that included. Yeah. Um, and that will take a lot of the work off of, of Jen and Raquel because they are kind of covering that at this Could point. Could she do books? I have an awful time putting my books together. <laughs> you need to hire a CPA. I mean, CPA. it takes almost as much time to put everything <laughs> in there as it... So... Anyway, all right. So, um, and I am also um, requesting um, quite a bit of money for consultants to redo our zoning regulations in the POCD, as I've alluded to in the past. Uh -huh. We did a year or two ago also voted to increase the fees and it never made it to the council. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they would still be used, but I mean, we're still like charging five, five dollars for some items. Yeah. And I mean, we want to be comparable we'll get to that to other towns. <laughs> yeah. This is one of the many tasks that that are all encompassing in this. So on that note, Charlie, we had major, major discussions about that. And we raised the building fee huge. We have to chart, we tried to eliminate all other fees. One payment covers everything. But I believe the Connecticut law or some law says we have to charge something for, am I correct? Something, there was something where we could not eliminate yeah. Oh, the state fee. Yeah. It's the still there. State Certain fee. things have well, to go to the state. Yep. We escalated the building permit fees, and I'm talking they went up huge, and we didn't escalate anything else, but that's where the increase yeah. went. So tell them you want some of their money. I was going to say, <laughs> that's great, except that the but building nothing. department has a separate budget, but even though it's part of development services. But that's yeah. not where it gets... Well, we don't, we don't, get, we don't get the incoming money. That goes to general fund. So. And that's the problem is you guys don't, because yeah. even the building department yeah. like, well, we brought in all this money, yeah. and we get none of it. Yeah. Right. Well, what, whatever. I mean, so because up, there are services they perform up there, and we aren't it's getting, charge, you know. I, I understand. I'm just. So we, we will be looking at the fee schedule as well, and you know, among so many other things. Okay. Um, I did attend the 2019 National American Planning Association conference, and uh, I went to a number of transit-oriented development workshops, um, some with uh, RELIUPA, which is the Religious Land Use and Institutionalized Persons Act. So that's dealing with institutions and churches, oh, and you know how, how you could regulate them should you want to. Um, I went to a couple of uh, workshops that kind of had just some creative things to do, like on streetscapes and like actually on the pavement. The, these communities went out and literally <laughs> painted on the pavement, and it, it acted as um, one a, a, a community builder. And people got together and and you know met their neighbors. But the other thing it did is they they like this one. They painted a hummingbird on the street at this one intersection, and everybody always would go straight through there and just kind of crazy, you know, cars and, you know, they'd be driving through and fast and there'd be kids on the streets and so they were always worried about, you know, somebody getting hit. Now with this hummingbird literally on the pavement, people stop and say, whoa, there's something on the street. So it's it was just a creative way of addressing some traffic issues and, and speeding. And, and it was a great... Um, consensus builder for the community and stuff so so I went to some good workshops and it was definitely worth it and uh, hopefully I'll be bringing some of that to the new regulations so good. 
Okay, applications. Oh, any authorizations for administrative approval? Just uh, no, nope. just that other one just that we already addressed. Okay. The beacon sign. Uh, applications to be received. Uh, are they are they ready or and or is it the Dunkin' um, Donuts? You said they had a problem when you talked to me. Yeah, uh, it looks like we're going to have to reach out to the applicant. We did a site inspection over there, and it looks like the surrounding uses are blocking in the right-of-way that they're proposing. They have, like, an easement from the state to uh, use a certain driveway to as an entrance that would eventually lead to their drive-through, and it's, like, completely blocked by motor the motor sports facilities that are on either side so it looks like we need to address that <laughs> first and foremost <laughs> um, as, as, as an access so issue they aren't ready, then. so no um, but we did want to let you know that they are um, that they have applied which is why we put them under applications to be received um, and we will be working with the applica applicant going forward we also did hold an ART it was before the site inspection was held but um, so that those two steps have been completed um, Administrative and review team. Yeah. No, what was holding, you said? Holden? We already. Yeah. Oh, you we held, held it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. And uh, so, okay, so that 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 has to be determined yet yeah, on, on yep. the property. Okay, and uh, this is Charlie's uh, announcement he had uh, the, oh, reptiles. the reptiles. Yeah. Are they ready? Uh, yeah, they uh, they should be ready. We we took a look at their site plans and gave them comments, and they responded to us. So they should be good to go for the next meeting. Okay. Have they had our ART? Um, no, we didn't feel like they needed a full blown ART for this. We did do a site inspection, and we met with them, and we've circulated it. Um, so we should be good to go. Of course, we'll make sure we get all of the comments first. But if you have an ART, then people are required to attend, or at least you got you know who doesn't attend, then you can hit them up for a report. I don't know. There's advantages to the ART. Yeah. I mean, because they're they're not really proposing site changes. We asked for a few site maintenance issues to be corrected, but it's really just one use going into the shopping center. If you, we can hold an ART, if that is, well, but if you, it's not. It's, it's basically it's just um, a use going into a previous tenant space. Oh, There's so no so no Road, outside modifications. South Road Plaza. Mm -hmm. So it's really a simple application. Yeah, okay. Well, Are they going to bring any of the critters in when they have to? I hope so. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. No. Uh, they can bring in samples of the siding and colors and patio furniture. I don't furniture want to see a snake. And patio furniture samples of alligators, lions, and snakes. Oh, right. I think Not they're 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 Maybe they'll bring in ATP. cuddles, the boa constrictor. Right, can we? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah the height restriction. Can we? Uh, <laughs> Uh, what have we got? Just uh, the continuation. Yep, uh, we have the those two continuations. Um, the yep, the AAA and Pride, um, the reptiles, and was there something else? Well, that's not gonna be ready. Um, we we might uh, get an application for a waiver of sidewalk, but um, we haven't received the application. It's a modification of a site plan. A waiver so, of a sidewalk. Yeah. So. Good luck. <laughs> You've done it before. So. So we'll see. I, I'm not sure if it's going to come in in time. Okay. For the sidewalk. I don't know, but I, that's why you're saying good luck depends on where it is. Uh, Okay, I, I I don't know about because we got two. It depends on. Okay, let's talk to you. Yeah, add the uh, uh, okay. Put the uh, put the reptiles on next week. Yes. Sure. Yes. Or two yes. weeks. Yes. All right. Yes. Two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. And we are also working with Connecticut Mulch again on their bonds. So. 
I didn't well, hear that. We're also working with Connecticut Mulch again on rectifying their landscaping and getting their bonds Good. situated. So. Because that, I had that in the back. I kept that in the book because Michael went out there and made suggestions, and uh, apparently they never did it. And they've ignored us on other things, too. Well, although they did, I guess... Well, they had, did work on their trucks and using their air brakes. Easier to ask forgiveness and permission to get outfits. <laughs> you guys been fighting that battle since before I got here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Will, 10 years from now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, well. Motion to adjourn. Oh, who's making the motion? Okay. Oh, second. <laughs> well, okay, then one of you got a second. She did. I just seconded. Oh, okay. All in favor. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.